What's up, you guys? My name is Grace Lauren Taylor, and you are listening to episode 16 of the Trauma Dump Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Here at the Trauma Dump Podcast, we seek to answer the question, what is mental health? How do I take care of my own? And how do I support others? This week, we will be discussing the topic of religious abuse and suicidal ideation. So viewer discretion is definitely advised. This week, we have a special guest known as the Cat Lynn System, or Claude Beauty on both YouTube and on TikTok. Be sure to go check them out after the episode and show them some love for being on this episode. spooky season. So if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see that I did a little spooky makeup today. I like it a lot. Here, let me zoom in. Ooh, ooh. Hi, do you like my makeup? Thank you if you do. Um, took me like 10 minutes. I love doing makeup. I actually, when I was in college, I had a lot of stage makeup classes and those were my favorite. My absolute favorite day was when we aged ourselves up like 70 years and became old people. Oh, I adored being an old lady. I don't know what it is, but I cannot wait to be an old lady, to be an old hag, to have like a freaking cane and start randomly whacking people. I don't know why that's what I envision of myself as an old lady, but Oh, yes, that is, bro, that is what I'm so excited for in my future is becoming an old lady and having a bunch of grandchildren that I just cook for and 10 out of 10, that is my goal, like long term goal is to be a crotchety old lady. Yes, very exciting. So this week we will be discussing how religion and suicidal ideations or suicidal tendencies may be linked. If anyone you know or love suffers from self-harm, self-mutilation, or suicidal tendencies, you are not alone, okay? I also suffer from self-harm and self-injury, and I do have suicidal tendencies. And I just want you to know that this is a safe place, and you are worthy of love, and you deserve help for what you're going through. In the description, we have so many resources. The Crisis Text Line can help you with self-harm. Text a crisis counselor at 741-741. The Crisis Text Line is open 24 seven, day or night. So please, if you are in immediate help, please call 911, all right? We need you here. You deserve to live. And your life is so meaningful, your worth, is not in anything that you do, but it is inherent. So please stay with us. Just a quick reminder before we start this episode, I am not a licensed health professional. I am not a counselor. I do not have any medical degrees. I am just a person who has experienced a lot of trauma, deals with religious abuse, and has tried to commit die several times, and I've been hospitalized for it. The reason why I'm doing this podcast, the reason why we're doing this episode is because we need to spread awareness of suicidal ideations and suicidal tendencies, especially when it falls under religious abuse. This podcast only seeks to create community and further understanding of these topics that are so often overlooked and extremely misunderstood. If you or a loved one are in need of medical professional help, we have resources in our description. The topics discussed here are for a mature audience, so viewer discretion is always advised. Hello, welcome to the podcast. Hi. How are you doing today? Um, I'm doing pretty good. I have a little kitty right here beside me and plushie, so Yay. I'm not that anxious anymore. Oh, that's great. I'm I'm glad that you have some support through your plushies and your kitty. So did you get um, my... Instagram thing that I sent with the graphic. Yep. Okay. 
So it's it's good. I don't need to edit anything. No, everything is completely fine. I looked over it. I was very impressed with the research you did. It was phenomenally done. I've never seen anything like that. I was very impressed with you. This was going to be a very good podcast. I like how you look into it. You did all the research. That was very impressive. You listen. You look into it. You don't just like go offhand. You do the research. I've never seen anyone else done that. So I'm very impressed by that. It was a very well written. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, I, I did take a podcasting class at Texas Tech University. And one of my professors was like, I I despise some of these podcasts. They don't do enough research. And so I'm trying a little bit to make him proud of being like, I'm doing all my research and they're cited. <laughs> Always. Oh, yeah. I think you need to. I was impressed. I was like, oh, my gosh. Thank you. Did, uh, what pronouns do you prefer? I forgot. She, them, whichever you prefer. Yeah. Okay. I was like, wow, they really did an amazing job with like really looking into it, understanding it to a T. Thank very, you. Very, very well written. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It shows you care about the topic. Yes. Yes, I do. Cause and I've... not enough people do that. Not enough people do that. Like whenever I do my videos, I do a lot of research. I look into it. I ask people questions. There's some things I don't have. I don't understand. And like with me having anxiety, some things that help me may not help other people. So I ask them, Hey, what helps you guys? Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. I mean, things that may work for me may not work for somebody else. And it's the same thing with any type of trauma. What may be yep. traumatic for me may not be yep. traumatic for another person. And, and different levels, different mm-hmm. levels of severity. That people's symptoms may not be the same. People's, um, the way it manifests just, within. Just because severity is not as bad as somebody else doesn't mean it's blank. It's not it's as not valid. It's not yeah, is it, as girl, real. It's still va- is it valid. It's valid. It's still valid. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. So welcome to the podcast. This week, we will be discussing how religion and suicidal tendencies may be linked. Um, And from my own experience, I know that in the Catholic religion, suicide used to be known as a mortal sin or a cardinal sin. And according to yeah, it's like known as selfish. And according to my research, they no longer recognize it as so. But that doesn't mean that individuals still don't hold that belief. Certain churches do hold that belief, especially in the evangelical church. Mm-hmm. They, Maybe yeah. not all, but a lot of them. Yes, definitely. So according to some of the research that I've done, doctors Ryan E. Lawrence, who is an MD, Maria A. Okunodo, MD, and Barbara Stanley, PhD, consider religion and suicide to be linked. They have reported that, especially in men, and I think their research was done over men in Utah from ages 18 to 34, that there was a significant link between their religiosity and suicidal tendencies of the feelings of being inadequate within their religion and feeling like, well, if I'm not enough, then I shouldn't exist anymore. Or the feeling of, I would rather already be with God. Yep. And it makes me incredibly sad because at least from my own perspective, I was raised in a very Christian based household and we were always told that the highest form of anything is heaven and when I was going through my very suicidal tendencies at 15 years old I was like well why do I really want to be on this earth I remember our pastor said that the earth was the closest thing that Christians would ever get to hell and so for some reason in my brain that made me think oh I'm already in hell I don't want to be here anymore let me just kill myself and go to heaven and then I'll feel better and right It created this dissonance within my brain of like, I'm suffering. I don't want to be in this suffering anymore. What is the best way I can escape out of this suffering? Exactly. Or sometimes they uh, make you feel as if without God, you are worthless. It's all because of God that you're here. You have your talents that make you feel as if without God, you are nothing. You're nothing more than a vessel for him to use. And you're like, well, I'm just getting used. Then 
And if I'm nothing without God, then like, I can't be my own person. And it make everything seem like it always has to be about God. Like God does not care about our own mental well-being, that he's not understanding of our struggles. He's not understanding of other things going on in our life. Like it always has to be him, which makes us confused because we're like, well, I thought he was a good God. Mm -hmm. So why, like, I know sometimes I did a video, I didn't post it yet about like some people going to work and people judging them. Like, well, you work on a Sunday, you work on Wednesday nights and yeah, we have to work. God mm -hmm. understands. And it makes us feel like there's, there's nothing to us. Mm -hmm. And if heaven is the best thing in the universe, then why not go there as quicker as soon as possible, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Especially having the mental disorders, disabilities, mm -hmm. and they hammered, they, they are seriously discriminatory when it comes to people with mental health or disability. And they look yeah. down on them and say, what sin have you committed? Yeah, definitely. And going off of the disability thing, I, I have physical and mental disabilities. And I was always told growing up that once you got to heaven, you got your perfect body. Right. And I remember being a seven-year-old and just struggling so much with my own physicality and my family kind of gaslighting me and being like, oh, you're just making it up. I would have like severe migraines that would make me fall to the ground and cry. And my papa, my grandfather would always talk about, well, I can't wait to go to heaven because then I'm going to get my, my perfectly healed body and I'll be whole and I'll have no aches, no ailments. And little seven-year-old me was like, I want to have there. that. Yeah. I want to be there right now. I'm in so much pain all the time and no one believes me. Why can't I go right now? Why can't we have that perfect heal? Why can't body you now? just take me right? And you feel like you're just suffering on earth for no reason. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. So before we start this interview, um, I would like to ask you what your pronouns are. How would you like to be referred to by our audience, by the listeners? so that we do not um, refer to you in a way that you do not wish to be. You're so cute. Thank you. Um, my pronouns are she, they, and they can use either one. Okay. I'm awesome. comfortable with both. Okay. So you are comfortable with discussing your personal experiences? Yes, I am. Okay. Awesome. But to make sure I'm not crossing any boundaries and respecting your experiences, please feel free to interrupt me at any time if you feel uncomfortable or triggered. We can also take a break at any time. Aww. And if you don't feel like answering a question, just tell me to skip it. I promise I won't get offended because my priority is to make sure you feel safe at all times. Wow. That, I really appreciate you're so sweet. Thank you. I will definitely let you know if that ever comes about. Thank you. Of course. So getting into your platform, you have over 4 million followers on TikTok. Do you consider yourself an influencer? Um, people call me an influencer and I don't really know what I am. I don't, it's just me making videos. I promise I almost have a content creator. Yeah. I don't, that's what I call myself. I make videos for people mm -hmm. and I just want to help other people who think they're alone and struggling I don't know if that makes me an influencer or not I just mm -hmm. make videos because I I try to give the people what I didn't receive yes. that makes sense yes that makes so much sense um I actually in my episode with Brave Dave which was episode nine we talked about does he consider himself an influencer and we went into this sort of debate over what is the difference between an influencer and a content creator and, you know, I just think of everyone as just a person. <laughs> well, right. Yeah. And I think when we say the word, at least when it comes to my mind, when we say the word influencer, it makes me think of someone who is to be praised or someone who is kind of setting themselves up um, apart from somebody else, not necessarily above but like apart from somebody else and trying to get other people to be more like them. And so when I think of your content, I think of you trying to make sure people feel okay with being themselves. Yeah. And I really appreciate your content. It is, it's very fun to watch. It's like a warm hug is the best way I Yay! can describe it. And um, honestly, like, I don't, if that's what influencer is, I don't want to be that because I don't mm -hmm. want praise I want people to 
love themselves. Mm -hmm. I want people to heal with themselves. I don't want people to be like me. I want people to heal and find themselves. Mm -hmm. Because it's fine to be inspired by people. It's completely fine. But like, if you are trying to make people be you or make them Mm -hmm. jealous to be you, then Mm -hmm. you're not really doing, you're not really putting a positive influence in the world. Yeah exactly we're not, we're not broken this is the world there's so many like this, this discrimination there's harassment of the lgbtqia of uh, people being racist like there's so many problems in this world the last thing we need is a competition we need people to lead and help other people with everything going on yeah. i know there's a lot of people in this world that feel like they're alone and feel like nobody else understands them there's no way out of it especially if they've been manipulated by um a cult a cult cult a cult, a cult, or uh, religious manipulation, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So how do you use your platform to make a difference? I, again, the, the comment I made before is I try to use my platform as a way to warn people, mm-hmm. but also have people find themselves. So I've had experiences that I didn't know were not normal as a child in the church. And so I try to talk about toxic churches i know it's not all churches but i try to really show people hey if your experiences in your church bad church get out of there Mm -hmm. but i also try to help people say hey this is how people should be treating you in every one of my povs i try to kneel down Mm -hmm. because i don't want people to look up at me like i'm some kind of idol i want them to look at me as if i'm their friend that's why i'm always kneeling down to the level kneeling down to the level because when you're helping someone you got to kneel down to their level. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always try to do in every single one of my videos. So they see me eye to eye. They know I want to get down and understand. Mm -hmm. So that's what I try to do with my videos is make them know they are worthy of being treated with kindness and that there is hope and there is people willing to listen and help you out. Yes, definitely. From my own experiences, health is one of the greatest gifts that we often take for granted. Why do you think that is? I think it depends. What kind of health are you talking about? Physical, mental, emotional, or all of the above? All of the above, but you can go one by one if you'd like to. Okay. Physical health. Well, I think we take advantage of physical health because when we're younger, we don't feel anything. We think we're we think we're invincible, man. We don't think anything's wrong. But also, like, especially if we don't have any disability or notice we have any disability when you're, when we're younger, mm-hmm. we think everything's fine. Mm-hmm. But then as we get older, like I didn't realize I had some mental disability till I got older, mm-hmm. and now I'm frustrated with myself. I take out anger on myself, thinking like, why am I having these issues now? Why am I ha-? these issues were always there? Mm-hmm. Sometimes they don't display itself till after you get older. But again, I think people take advantage because, again, when we don't see it when we're younger or we're manipulated to believe it doesn't exist. That goes for physical, mental, and emotional. Mm -hmm. Or those for mental and emotional, especially, I think sometimes those things are suppressed, the trauma. So we are fine for a long time. Then when we get older, bam, it hits. And they're like, well, it's fine back then. Why, Why am I dealing with this now? Why can't I just be normal and happy back then? Yeah. You can't because you have a lot of trauma you have to deal with. And the healing journey is its own journey on itself. Mm -hmm. Does that that answer your question? It does. Yes. And I like to think of these questions as more open-ended, like a conversation. Um, From my own experience, these questions help me to spur on a conversation, at least with myself. Sometimes, sometimes I'm just sitting and like, why do I take my health for granted? Because when you're not sick, you don't even push yourself yeah you're because that you didn't have these problems before it didn't show but now you're like mm-hmm. I, I I don't know I overdo it I overdid it like before I was um medicated for severe anxiety I would push myself to the point where my anxiety caused severe heart pain mm-hmm. uh fainting spells and non athletic seizures I didn't know all that was due to panic attacks and anxiety mm-hmm. but I really pushed myself and took advantage of it because I remember what it's like not having it and again sometimes some of these things hit later because things were suppressed or things were gaslit to pretend it doesn't exist Mm -hmm. that's that's really true Um, my doctor he'll tell me that when you ignore or suppress or you know 
you don't recognize the hard things that you're going through, the pain that you're enduring when you gaslight yourself and say, oh, you're fine. Oh, I'm fine. Everything's okay. Um, Your body starts to take that into account, starts to hold it in different places in your body. And when it becomes I have tendinitis. I have Mm -hmm. tendinitis tendinitis to do that. I, my spouse could pinch real, real hard right here. I don't feel it. Yeah. Yeah. When you ignore these, like, mental emotional distresses it your body will manifest them into your physical being until you cannot ignore it anymore and you have to deal with it and oh it does not help when your family degrades the severity of it Mm -hmm. as a child so especially if you grew up with that with your family not just parents but like people around you degrading severity of something you do it to yourself because that's what you were taught to do yeah that's something I'm currently trying to get out of and stop because I will tell I I I am I realize how hypocritical I am I am will tell other people this and I will I will still do it to myself and that's something I'm trying to learn is not to do that to myself because I'm trying to set an example to my followers and if I'm not taking care of myself they Mm -hmm. won't yeah and I know for a fact that um, people that you look up to when um, they're telling you something and they're not actually doing it for themselves, it's a bit hypocritical and they'll see it as false. And I was a nanny to four boys and I would tell them all the time to, you know, brush their teeth, brush their hair, take care of themselves, make sure you wash your face. And then one day I just came to work and I was a mess. And I told them to do those things and they were like, well, you're not doing it for yourself. So why should I? Yeah. And it's the, it's the same thing with anybody you look up to. You're accidentally projecting what you want for yourself onto other people. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. You don't want, no one wants to admit that, but like I had to admit it to myself. Like I project what I want for myself and I, it's almost like we feel as if we don't deserve that because no one treated us as if we deserve that. Mm Mm-hmm. It's reparenting yourself. You gotta, you gotta do it. You really have to do it. Even like, I'll say this. People will be like, oh, every parent tries their best. That's false. Cause I know that's (laughs) false Mm -hmm. because I've, I've dealt with a parent who couldn't give a shit about me. Um, but within that being said, if you see yourself, if you actually see yourself, and you see the pain that you're going through and you acknowledge it. Sometimes you have to step outside of yourself and be like, how can I take care of this person and treat yourself like you are your best friend? This is yep. the only thing that you can do you right gotta now. Talk to yourself. You got to talk to yourself as if you're a different person. Be like, mm-hmm. if you treat other people with worth, why not do it to yourself? Exactly. Exactly. And you, you have to try it. This is, this is something I have to do every single, every single day is literally say, Gracie, you are doing the best you can stop telling yourself that you're worthless. Stop telling yourself that you can do better because sometimes you can't, and that is okay. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> that's me with driving I am I can't drive I still have severe anxiety the PTSD but also having BIDs one of our alters has severe car trauma which mm-hmm. triggers her to the front doesn't know how to drive and that causes a lot of problems so we are legally not allowed to drive and um I always beat myself up about it because I'm like why can't I just drive why can't I just drive other DID systems can drive other mm-hmm. people think that why can't I and I have to sit with myself and be like you are not able-bodied and that's okay Mm -hmm. I used to be able to drive but then later on because a DID appears later on in life about 20 Mm -hmm. something like that sometimes and I was diagnosed with DID in 2000 2020 Mm -hmm. and February 2020 Mm -hmm. and uh, that changed my life yeah 
because I was not alone in my brain anymore. Mm-hmm. I was with others, which is, but they have altars and stuff like that. They mm-hmm. have switches and I'm getting to know them. I've been, I had, a, I haven't been diagnosed for three years mm-hmm. and I still can't drive. Yeah. And everyone's different. Mm-hmm. And it's okay that I can't do it. Yeah. It's not, I'm not lazy. I'm just not able to like some people and that's yeah. not my fault. Yeah. I have to tell myself that I'm not being lazy all the time. Ah, oh my god! Some gosh. things hit you later in life. Mm-hmm. Like you're able to do so many things. I used to be able to act on stage and stuff like that, but then all of a sudden, I can't. There's some things you're just not able to do anymore mm-hmm. because you've been suppressing all that trauma for two decades or three decades. I don't know how long. I don't know how old you are. You're 23. I'm right? 23. Yeah. For for several decades. It's going to bite you hard in the butt. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, those rulers, mm-hmm. those, those, those rulers that you pull long. If you, if, if you keep going and going and going, and let it go to smack you harder. Yeah. That's it what is. it's like. And I, and I know so many people are so hard on themselves about it. Like, well, I was able to do this. I was able to do that. I'm like, you went through heck. You went through hell. And your brain is not fully developed to your later 20s. Mm-hmm. And so it's then you're able to process it all. Because mm-hmm. when you're a kid, when you're a kid, you ain't pro- you're already going through crap at school. You're gonna think about the trauma you went through. Yeah, you're not able to, and that, that that's not your fault. That's nobody's fault. And I, and I break for so many people that that are so hard on themselves about it. Like, why didn't I just face this when I was this age? Why, why now? Mm-hmm. And it's not it's not their fault. It's mm-hmm. not their fault. Some things don't hit till later. Yeah, and that's okay. And the right people are going to take that time to understand. They're going to take the time to listen and be like, it's okay. This was not your fault. We'll work through, we'll work it out. We'll figure it out. And that, I, I just break for people. I'm sorry. I, I, I okay. hurt for people that, I hurt for people that are just hard on themselves about it. Yeah. I, I, cause I know what that's like being able to do so much. And all of a sudden you get hit with disorders that you're like, I didn't have these before, but they hit later in life sometimes. Yeah all the trauma that happened that adds that adds up to something and then the existing drama that's mm-hmm. happening in your life now like that all adds up yeah. that affects your brain that affects your processing that affects your physical body it all affects each other and i don't mm-hmm. think we, we we comprehend the extent of that yeah we i think mean, even still today like scientists are still getting into it and it's becoming more recognized that your trauma manifests physically. And I have a proof of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm living proof of it too. And it's like we have been denying it so often. Even scientists will like they've been denying it so often because no one wants to admit this shitty thing is true. No one right. wants no to one wants to face it. it. No one wants to face the, the skeletons in the closet, but eventually this thing's going to get so bad, you have to clean it out. Exactly. exactly. But what matters is you don't have to do it alone. And that's what I try to do with my videos is make sure people know they're not alone. I tell followers, don't call me an idol. Don't call me famous. Don't call me whatever. See me as a family. See mm-hmm. me as a friend. Every time I meet a follower, I always say, hey, are you comfortable with a hug? Do you want a high five? Because some of them are not okay with hugs and that's completely okay. I always try to give them an item of mine so they know I see you mm-hmm. and tell them, hey, and they get, I've had so many get anxious and cry and scared and shaking. I ask them, can I hold your hand? And I look at them. I say, don't be afraid. Don't mm-hmm. view me as this idol. View me as your friend. Mm-hmm. I'm here for you. I'm your family. That's what I want them to know. They don't have to go through this alone. Yeah. Trauma is extremely isolating. And it didn't used to be. It really didn't used to be. It became extremely isolating um, with the rise of actual Christianity. Because if you think Mm -hmm. of pagan, pagan cults, cults, religions, it was all centered around taking care of one another, providing for one another. You can look at so many That's what Jesus displayed. 
Exactly. Look, look how he treated the prostitutes, the one that bought expensive oil and washed his feet, and mm-hmm. he let her. Mm-hmm. What a beautiful example. Now you see men catcalling with them, call them sluts. Really? Yeah. Like, really? And yeah. how he treated Zacchaeus is my favorite because he was a tax collector. And he goes, let me come over to lunch. Mm-hmm. He let Zacchaeus know, I see you. Come on, let's let's have a talk. Like, where where did that Christianity go? But he sat down with all the people and gave them bread and fish. He just sat with them mm-hmm. lovingly. What happened to that? It has been super distorted. It has been extremely dis- distorted. All, I feel like so many large religions have been extremely distorted by greed, by power, their image, you know, by their very image their based stance. Yeah, how mm-hmm. they look. I, I had a lot of. I know my father was trying to be caring mm-hmm. the best he could. Mm-hmm. He had a lot of trauma in his life. I'm not going to go into detail out of respect for him. And he would always make the comment of, what would people think if they saw you like that? What would people think of our family? And again, I I know he, he showed cared. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my brain went, but God loves me anyway, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Doesn't he just love me for who I am? And if Christians are going to see me as this horrible person that are judging a book by a cover, cover like jesus taught like god looks on the inside but man look out the outside appearance like that's what he said to david's dad i forgot david's dad's name uh but that's what he said about david Mm -hmm. like come on like use the bible (laughs) yeah but i was always like asking these questions and i don't know why i went on this rabbit trail but they cared about their image Mm -hmm. how it made us look and i'm like but doesn't it say like God looks on the inside? Mm-hmm. We should look at the heart mm-hmm. or the actions, like the fruit of your labor will display itself. I forgot mm-hmm. what the verse was, but stuff like that, like faith without works is dead. Like when they see my works and not just focus on how I look. Yeah. There's just so many questions I had. It just nobody had answers. No. And I really do think Christianity Christianity as a whole needs to be completely deconstructed. Um, Agreed. Mind you, if you're listening to this podcast, we know it's not all Christians who are bad mm -hmm. or toxic. We completely understand that. But we are calling out to those that are toxic, manipulative, and narcissistic. So let's make that clear right there. Yes. (laughs) If you're a good one, thank you. You get a cheese ball. (laughs) (laughs) You know... Something that I, one of my mentors has told me, he was like, if you feel called out by something that I'm saying, you are the person that I am talking to. Mm -hmm. And when I say that I'm, I'm addressing those that use Christianity as a means for personal gain. And It makes me so distressed and more than ever people are turning away from Christianity. Now, I'm not going to say they're turning away from God or turning away from Jesus, but they're turning away from Christianity because of what it has become. Um, right. It is, it is no longer a safe haven for people. It very much used to be. And something that I want to address with this episode on religious abuse, any religion can be abusive. Any attempt to exert power and control over someone by using religion, faith, or beliefs can be and is spiritual abuse. And spiritual abuse can happen within any religious organization or any interpersonal relationship that uses religion to- control another person's behavior or their appearance it's it's control and it's so vital that if you feel like you are unable to 
be yourself because of your religion, that religion is not serving you. That's, it's really hard to take a step back and recognize this is no longer serving me. And especially if you were raised with it, that's all you knew. Yeah, it is. And spiritual abuse is not limited to one religion. I have, I have to keep driving that home. Yes. We're talking about religious abuse. We mean any religion, any religion. I just grew up with the Christianity. So did I. So that is the biggest link that we both have to this, but it's not, it's not limited to any denomination of Christianity either, or any group of people. It can happen in any religious group and it can happen as an element of child abuse, elder abuse, domestic violence, also called interpersonal or interpartner violence. It can be a concern across all ages, gender, so- socioeconomic classes, ethnic groups, and locations. Abuse is a pattern in which an individual, whether it is a person in authority, such as a deacon, a pastor, whatever have you, or a intimate partner or a parent, someone who has authority uses fear, intimidation, violence, or anything else to harm and control another person. And abuse causes significant trauma, and it can have such a significant impact on your mental health. And something I want to say to those listening, abuse is not your fault. You're being abused is not ever your responsibility is not ever your fault like i i see it all the time is like oh what was what was she wearing what what was she doing where was she located like i was sexually assaulted in my church growing up at 15 years old by an 18 year old dude and i thought he was my friend and we were just hanging out after church and he was like, hey, he went to the bathroom. He was like, hey, Grace, come check this out and pulled me into the bathroom and abused me in the church. And that is not my fault. And I remember telling one of my church leaders who was like 20 something at the time. And she was like, well, a you should have leader at 20. Yeah. She was like, well, why did you go into the men's bathroom? You shouldn't have gone in there. What? And I it shut me down so fast and I never talked about it until right now. I never told my parents, even though I wanted to, I never told anyone else. And the most ridiculous thing about this is she used it in one of her sermons, like a few weeks later about sexual immorality and how young women need to be aware of who they're with and where they're going. That's not put themselves what yeah yeah she used me where is their responsibility where is their accountability in the men it was non-existent it it was a baptist church and it was non-existent i i will never ever go back to that church i have never gone back there and it kind of destroyed me (laughs) like because they they preached there that any form of sexual immorality and I'm putting quotes for those listening on Spotify and Apple podcasts they would say that that's any touching that can lead to any sexual thing or whatever they were like even if you're kissing even if you're having a front hug anything that can lead to um lust is sexual perversion is what they would say and it was like, it's at fault of both people. And I despised it. And they would make it out to be that if you had sex before marriage, you were a rag that had dirty you're, hands been wiped on it. Mm-hmm. You're impure. Hey, I'm sorry. Can I, Can we take a break real quick? Yeah. go we're back so have you experienced religious abuse 
Yes. According to the American Psychological Association, there is a growing consensus that both head and heart acknowledgement of God, i.e. God concepts or doctrinal beliefs about God's love versus God images or experiential God knowledge of God's love, influence theistic believers recovery from mental health and substance use disorders or SUDs. Theistic believers derive peace and comfort from their beliefs and experiences of personal of a personal deity who is compassionate and has experienced as near and forgiving. So what I get from that, a lot of people will think of their God or their gods as loving, considerate compassion, and they derive peace and comfort from that. They derive it from their gods. And so indeed, like 12-step programs and other spiritually oriented models of substance abuse recovery often emphasize the importance of experiencing divine love on a daily basis as a source of strength, acceptance, and recovery. And mm-hmm. But that's not what they need. Sure, it can help some people who believe in the existence of a God, but not everybody does especially if they have religious trauma around saying if you don't do this god's gonna do this or god's gonna send you to hell we do this Mm -hmm. and stuff like that that's striking the fear into them that's not always recovery yeah they don't need to know about god's love in order to recover yeah sure it can help some people encourage them to get better but it's not for everyone and that's okay i don't think that should be pushed on people on everybody yeah on anybody that's very true Many people struggle with their relationship with God or their views of God, and it can help them or it can enable them to relapse into mental health difficulties or even suicide. I also do want to say, I do appreciate you sharing what you did before, that I know that was, is difficult to share that and feel like what happened is not valid mm-hmm. and make them feel like it was your fault i guarantee i promise you that was not your fault and i'm sorry they were not there to protect you but i hope you have someone it sounds like you do your partner sounds like someone who's very protective and sees it and yeah not deserve that and that was not your fault yes he i love him very much he's he's the strongest confidant i have and I'm, I feel very blessed to be in his life and for him to be in my life. And, you know, I do struggle every single day and he also struggles every single day. Um, We both have pretty severe depression and, you know, the beginning of our relationship, we went into couples therapy because we didn't want to impact one another negatively. And we learned coping mechanisms of whenever he's going through a bout of depression or whenever I'm going through a a bout of depression, immediately we tell one another that we're going through this and it is not the other person's fault and it has nothing to do with the other person. And from my own experience, that's really reassuring and it takes me out of that headspace of being like, oh, I've done something wrong because my child, my entire childhood was, what have I done wrong? Like, how is my bad behavior influencing how my mother is treating me? And so him telling me whenever he's not feeling well that, hey, I'm not feeling well. This is because of it's not your fault. It's not yeah, your it, fault. Just reassurance is a great thing to ask for. Mm-hmm. And especially when you have a significant other that deals with mental health problems, that reassurance can help flip that switch in your mind from it's about me to it's about them, whether or not it's a selfish, it's about me, because sometimes it's even my own perspective, even when I am struggling with myself 
that inherently for me, I'm not saying for anybody else, but that inherently for me can be very selfish. And I become very self-centered. And I forget sometimes that other people have needs, wants, and fears. And once I start to recognize that this this is all me, this is all in my head, and start to think, okay, how am I impacting my partner? How am I impacting my service dog? How am I impacting my friends with my behavior? Then it suddenly sometimes will flip a switch in my brain and be like, I need to deal with this in a different way. Because a lot of times whenever I'm going through very difficult situations, I will slam my head into a wall, like physically slam my head into a wall and sometimes give myself a concussion. And don't that, do that. It's been a coping mechanism I've had since I was two years no, old. No, don't do that. It's I've not a, a good thing. One. It's not a good thing. And so well, I understand how I used to do that in order to fall asleep. I will knock myself out. They mm-hmm. have insomnia. So I would literally try to knock myself out by throwing my head against the bedboard or the wall to make myself go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Don't do that, though. Yeah, we I don't do it very often. But sometimes when I'm in such a heightened state of anger, fear, sadness, just like suicidal ideations I will do it and so my partner Joey and I have made a plan of if I'm ever in the need of like doing this motion um he'll get a giant pillow and not put it over my mouth or my nose but against my head so I can still have the stem of doing this and I'm not hurting myself and I'm not some stemmings. I think that some people don't realize that some stemmings are harmful, but mm-hmm. sometimes you can't stop it, especially since something you've done to zero level. Yes, and so that has been really or the stemming of pain is just it's bad, mm-hmm. but feeling pain helps, and that's something we're trying to get out of. Because I know for me, I like to bite myself as a form of anxiety stemming or like ripping off my acrylics. And it makes me feel comforted. That's not healthy. And I'm trying to find other coping mechanisms. Mm-hmm. So I understand exactly what you're talking about. Stemming isn't always a good stem. That is a really, really bad stemming. Yeah. And so that's one of my very um, harmful ones that I have. And it's, I don't think it's something that I could ever get rid of. But I think it's important to put plans in place so that if you must do that stem you do it in a way that it's not harmful and I know a lot of people on our discord server have skin picking disorder and so I did a lot of research and there's some tape that you can buy that actually kind of feels like skin and you can wrap it around the places where you like to pick and I'll put a link in the description but I'll show it hold on yeah because my I know my little sister would absolutely love to have that it's this and oh my it's gosh. super like I don't know if you can tell, but it's super squishy. It's super, super, super squishy. And it yeah, does definitely kind of feel like skin. said that to me because that would be helpful for my little sister who has that picking stem. Yes. And so it's it's a pretty thick kind of piece of tape. And I it's I think it is medical tape. But say if you pick your nails like around here the skin around here and literally put it over your thumb and you can still do this and you're not going to hurt yourself and it feels like your skin and it has been beneficial for people that I know very well and so I have it too because um, I used to get my nails done a lot and they would I think trim my cuticles and so my cuticles are really overgrown and so you know you'll get like those little skin that like comes up and so I kind of would start to pick at it so I'll just put it over where that skin is and then I can still do this but not hurt myself what about the what about the face though with your face I think you can go on your face it's pretty it's if anyone knows any like face ones let me know because I gotta find one for my little sister to help her out 
I mean, I, I could some, put it on my face like that. I know and still some do this. people like do it as a form of self harm. Mm-hmm. Not many people want to talk about that, but it really is. Yeah, like the the negative stemming is a form of self harm. You don't need blood to self harm. You don't need an item. You you don't need yeah you. If you're doing damage to your physical body, it's self harm. Yeah, it is. That is legitimately the definition of self harm is inflicting pain upon the self. Yep. No matter what type of mental, physical, emotional, there's different kinds and people don't want to look into it or admit it, but it's a thing, everybody. It is. And you gaslighting yourself, that's mental self harm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Very much so. I'm going to stretch up real quick. That's a good idea. I'm holding tension. All right. Ooh. But yes, um, I do believe that this tape can come put on your face, um, be placed on your facial skin. Um, it's pretty cool. And it has been really beneficial. I'll put it, I'll send you a link and then I'll also put a link in the description. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna go into um divine struggle have you heard the term divine struggle Mm -mm. no i have not actually i have heard this term since i was a wee wee baby oh no wait a minute is it about like struggling with your relationship with god the holy spirit a little bit a little bit so divine struggle all right is defined as negative emotions focused within one's beliefs about their relationship with god it has been associated with suicidality, suicidality. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm dyslexic. Suicidality You're You're in other right. high risk groups, such as military veterans. So the divine struggle is very common i would say in the lds churches and other baptist more conservative churches right but it's struggling with one's emotional or spiritual health and it's dependent upon god concepts or knowledge of god and it's the struggle so they seek god for divine everything with everything they're going through kind of it's the concept that um, if in recovery, you think that God is loving and caring, but those conflicting feelings become of then why am I suffering so much? God must not be loving or caring. He is distant. He is cruel. And it becomes very depressing of like, oh, God is making me struggle for a reason. Like I I'm- did all of this. I did all this good, but nothing wrong. Why the heck did this happen? Yeah. So divine struggle can be different for um for anybody. And in the church I was raised in, they would use divine struggle as a um proof that you are one of God's chosen ones. If you are suffering from divine you, struggle, oh my because gosh, Satan is coming after you. Satan is coming after you. And if you feel like you're suffering, that's because you're one of God's chosen ones. And Satan really wants to come after God's chosen ones. So, yeah. How about some people are a-holes and crap happens? I don't like that mindset. I'm sorry. I it's believe okay. beauty from pain. I believe beauty from pain. Like the pain we go through can definitely transform us into better beauty. And mm-hmm. it can lead us to greater things. So that's what happened to me in my life. Mm-hmm. But I don't like that concept. Mm-hmm. I really do. It's almost like gaslighting you, making you feel invalidated for the crap you're going through. Mm-hmm. I don't like that. Yeah. Like, how about you just say we live in a world that's horrible and crap happens to good people? Yep. Just yeah. that's, it's almost like, oh, you're suffering and gaslighting them to be like, well, God, don't worry. It's, it's invalidating. That's disgusting. Yep. It's it's a real thing. It's a real thing that's taught in churches. And what I do you think of that. Yeah, what do you think of like churches viewing um having mental health disorders as demons or you're having demons within you? I had okay. 
family forgive me but I will talk about this experience mm-hmm. um, I'm not going to mention one of our altars names but they were a little and they mm-hmm. fronted and this was back in 2020 when um, our psychiatrist October of 2020 mm-hmm. when our psychiatrist psych- psychologist um idid psychologist talked to our family about us being diagnosed with did and mm-hmm. he met one of our littles mm-hmm. and he insisted that they were a demon and according to my an old friend of mine that was there and my sisters he was consistently asking do you know who jesus is do you know who jesus is because even the demons know who jesus is he must be a demon mm-hmm. and i've had a lot of different churches say that um if you have if, like, about having multiple art altars, it's not of the Bible. That's demon possession. You have B5, uh, BPD outburst is demon possession. You've been possessed. It just makes it feel as if you are crazy and you're a monster. Yeah. They don't want to validate your experiences instead of figuring out ways to help. They make you feel as if you're crazy. Yeah. I know what that's like. And that's. That's why I try to do different, yeah, different disorder videos because some people's experiences are really, really bad with the disorder. Some people don't experience it as severely as others, which doesn't invalidate anything. Mm-hmm. But for churches to treat them as if they're demons only reveals the monster they are themselves. Because what did Jesus do when they were demons? Cast them out? Did he treat the people any differently? No. He only made people who had mental disorders than the 12 disciples. The mental different disabilities, people who are crazy, and he still loves them. Yeah. Why can't they treat them like that? He he flipped tables with the hypocrites. He fought against the evil um, Pharisees. Mm-hmm. Whatever happened to that? Kneeling down, he healed the sick. Whatever happened to that? I know that I prayed upon for a DID. I I. No mental health disorder is in possession. Mm-hmm. And for anyone that's ever experienced that, I know exactly what you went through. Because they will gaslight you to believe it does not exist. Because they don't want to believe anything's wrong with their kid because it makes them feel like they did something wrong as a parent. Yeah. And it doesn't mean they did anything wrong as a parent. Sometimes crap happens and you can't stop it. Mm-hmm. You know, I completely am against that. That's bull crap. Yeah. Some people are mentally ill and some are severe than others, and that's okay. Well, it's not okay, but like they have it. It's Something not happened. anything to be ashamed of. Right. See a doctor. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not different yeah. than something physical. Exactly. What do you need to do? See a doctor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, it makes me very saddened. And again, when... nothing against my my, my dad. Mm-hmm. I know he did it because right now I'm probably gaslighting myself. Uh, but he did what he thought was the right thing, what he was taught. Mm-hmm. Does it invalidate what I went through? Mm-hmm. And it was still wrong, but I know they thought they did what was right. You know, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. They, they only projected what they were taught. Yeah. Um... That's when it comes to reparenting yourself is, yeah, they, they did what they were taught, but you as wrong, it's still wrong. And you know, and you recognize that it's wrong and you got to show yourself so much love and say it was wrong. I didn't deserve it. And I'm not going to continue to treat myself that way because when you're, raised in distortion because that's it's severe distortion when you're raised in distortion to believe that your mental health issues are your own fault because they're not there there there's so many factors on mental health issues hormonal physicality like things that you've gone through they're not your fault what falls within your control is how you choose to treat yourself during and after when you're struggling. That is the only thing that is within your control. And 
as hard as it is when you've grown up where people have invalidated you and told you that you're lying, you have to reaffirm you're yourself. You're crazy. Yeah. Or Reaff- not, just throw it away or you're not yeah. having a good relationship with God. That's mm-hmm. not it. It doesn't mean your relationship with God, if you believe in God, is rocky. It doesn't mean he hates you. That's not it. It Sometimes we have something mentally wrong. Mm-hmm. And that's not your fault. No, it isn't. The podcast purpose is to identify trauma and how we can help heal ourselves and help others. And something that I want to emphasize in every single episode is trauma is not who you are. It is what you went through. Yeah, And I like the little thing you have in the background. I see exactly right there. Mm-hmm. I painted this. This is my handwriting because I, I have to drive it home every single time because when I was in the midst of of despair whenever I'm super depressed I always blame myself I always think oh this is this is my fault there's something wrong with me no no trauma is not me my 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 being my soul I am not trauma I may be traumatized I am not the trauma it does not define who you are it does affect your Mm -hmm. life and who you are but it's not that define you exactly and for those listeners out there I want to encourage you to show yourself so much compassion that give yourself grace Mm -hmm. empathy Mm -hmm. cut yourself some slack and reach out to other people when you're struggling and If you do not feel safe to reach out to those around you, reach out to the Discord. It's anonymous. You can talk about literally anything and people will respond to you and reach out to you and show you so much love. You don't have to go through it alone. Exactly. And we are not meant to go through it alone. Humans are very social creatures. We are supposed to wrap ourselves around each other especially when we're struggling to build each other up and to not put each other down and to capture those thought distortions of i'm a failure i'm worthless i'm this is all my fault to capture those and to fucking throw them in the dumpster fire and move forward because until we recognize that those harmful thoughts are literally prohibiting you from growth because they are until we recognize that those thoughts are holding us back we're just going to keep continuing the cycle of abusing ourselves yeah it's ending the cycle exactly I think sometimes we feel as if we don't deserve that help. You do, though. You are worth the effort it takes to get better. I have no problem in childhood, like. If there was a parent or a sibling or a guardian, sometimes then they can feel as if you're a burden and you're not worthy of that help. And that's not true. Mm hmm. And again, some people may not be able to handle what you've been through, and that's not their fault. Sometimes they maybe mentally and emotionally may not be able to understand the help, and that's okay. But I assure you, there are people who can. Mm -hmm. Like some people don't have never gone through different things, didn't know how to help. That's okay. Doesn't mean they're not a good friend. And if they and if they are a good friend, they'll try to understand and do what they can to help. But some people have gone through what you've gone through. Mm-hmm. and they want to help you deserve that help screw yes. what the people in your past say and i'm sorry that if you were not treated like you were worthy of helping you deserve to get the help you need so you can get better and live a happy life because you deserve to be happy i promise you yeah
What do you think of the saying, I transmute my pain into purpose? Is that the saying of like beauty from pain? Kind of. Transmute means to take something and change it into something else. So like this was a negative experience, but turn into something positive, like look on the bright side. Well, purpose doesn't necessarily need to be positive or negative. Um, my grandmother would tell me all the time is the horrible things that you went through are horrible. What you do with them can help define your character and how you see yourself. And some people will go through horrible things and take those experiences and become horrible people. And some yeah. people will same take those same horrible experiences and use them as kind of fuel to be better and try to make an impact on other people's lives for the better. So it's like this then, for what you're explaining. You have a pile of ashes. You've been turned to dust. Okay? Some people just take those ashes and blow them off. But the fuel... The fire under enough pressure can turn it into a diamond that could be used for multiple things. I do believe like things, horrible things happen that nobody deserves. I know that happens. It is what you do with it that can turn you into one person or another. You have every right to be cold, every right to heal, every right to be. I'm not saying, oh, everything's fine. Don't do that. I'm not saying do that. But I'm saying is. Take your time. Mm -hmm. Process. It takes time to get that diamond right. To get that diamond where you want it to be. Take your time. I'm not saying be positive, bubbly. Oh, everything's fine. Don't do that. What I'm saying is take your time with everything that happened. Seek therapy. Mm -hmm. and and, And take it in. And see that it can possibly one day help other people. It can help someone. See how your experiences can help others. Or even grow. It, it's. Some of the most traumatic things that happened in my life. Have led me to the greatest treasures in my life. As weird as that sounds. Mm-hmm. And I may not be for everybody. And I'm sorry. And I'm, I, I don't. It, it revealed the real people in my life, the real friends. It really did. And it honestly made me into who I am today. Like, I was, for the longest time, I stuck with just the normal emo style. Mm-hmm. I was scared to change anything else. And then I went through a traumatic experience. I'm not going to go into detail what it was. But it somehow clicked in my brain to start wearing bubble braids or I clicked in my brain to do a blonde wig I don't know what it was but it made me want I do this thing when something bad happens I pamper myself like oh something dramatic happens boom Halloween stuff to buy myself and it it encourages me to be like this crap happened I deserve a reward I deserve pampering I, I don't know if that's a good thing or not for my therapist says she's a good thing like you went through something horrible mm-hmm. treat yourself mm-hmm. treat your self you went through war you went through mental health give yourself a break take a break for social media go get your nails done go get a massage go get that face mask go get some new makeup you wanted experiment i don't know for me it encourages me to to take care of myself better because mm-hmm. I know what I deserve. I know how I deserve to be treated. Mm-hmm. I know I didn't deserve that trauma. Mm-hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. Something sometimes we fuck up and we the trauma happens because we fucked up. Uh, <laughs> but take those experiences, learn from them, take accountability, responsibility from your actions, learn from them, and be a better person. Then. Mm-hmm. Self-care is very important, especially when you have gone through very difficult times and especially when 
um, people have not taken care of you. Um, I personally think that abuse they boundaries. Yeah. Abuse is anything like less than love, consideration, and care. Abuse is neglect. Abuse is mistreatment. If you have endured abuse, the best way to keep that thought process from your mind that you deserve it is to do the exact opposite, which is to take care of yourself. Yep. Is is to do something that- Give yourself pamper. mm -hmm, Do something that you enjoy. And pampering yourself may even be just brushing your hair for some people. Pampering yourself- could taking a long bath, taking a shower, taking a nap. Sometimes I've had like a really hard day. It's three o'clock. Yeah, I need a and nap. D- yeah, <laughs> don't and don't let people gaslight you out of that. So the right friends will be like, "Oh, you need a spa- day to yourself. That's fine. Take a day to yourself." Mm-hmm. The right don't don't worry about what other friends think, what other people will say. If they're your true friends, they'll be like, "Hey, okay, that's fine. Let me know if you need anything." And trust me, they're the they're the greatest friends you can ask for. Yeah, definitely. You are worth the effort it takes to take care of yourself. You are always worth love, consideration, compassion, and understanding. And if you're not getting that from other people, give that to yourself. Because I promise once you start to show yourself love you're going to attract other people that see that value in you because you value yourself and they're going to flock to it i've seen it it has happened to me of when i started to not just have confidence but treat myself with respect with recognition to not you know belittle myself to not put down my accomplishments my achievements yeah i just the little things give yourself mm-hmm. a pat on the back mm-hmm. listen sometimes we have such mental disability don't let anyone invalidate your mental disability okay guys don't do that mm-hmm. don't freaking do that like if all you did like i when i'm at home i push myself a lot and my partner my spouse knows this i'd be like i did the dishes i did this like okay did you rest no sweetheart go rest and I gotta be like, you know what? I did dishes today. I cleaned the letter box. That's good enough. I did good. And mm-hmm. my partner, they're so sweet. And they're like, oh, I used to believe I was worthy of praise by the number of accomplishments I did in a day. Mm-hmm. And my partner was more mad that like I wasn't resting yeah. or relaxing. And he's like, sweetheart, you're... I don't see the worth in, I don't have to come home to a clean home. I don't have to come with the dishes done or the, or the, um, or the dinner completed. I just want you to be okay. Mm -hmm. I want to come home to you being alive. I want to come home to you not passed out or fainted. I want to come home knowing you're safe and okay. Mm -hmm. And he's like, don't worry, we can do dinner together. Don't worry, we can just order something. The right partner will just prioritize your safety and well-being yes exactly you don't have to do your worth is not about the achievements you complete Mm -hmm. your worth should be in how you treat yourself your worth is inherent yeah yeah and how you show yourself that you are worthy is how you treat yourself how you treat other people, how you, yes, Gigi, how you treat Gigi. If you treat Gigi bad, you don't have worth. I'm just kidding, but still, Gigi's my service dog. Let's Gigi kid right Gigi. quick. I feel you, Gigi. It's a, I have a little kitty right here. Just just being like, hello, it's like a little baby. Oh, so cute, so cute. But yes. The way that you show yourself love matters and the way that you treat other people really is imperative. And if you are struggling to make friends and your self-worth is in the gutter, 
what I would recommend is prioritizing yourself first. Mm-hmm. Because people will treat you based on how you see yourself. You if... see yourself as a doormat, you're going to be treated as a doormat. You get seen as someone who's a people pleaser, you're going to be treated like a people pleaser. I've been there. And before you think about dating anybody, if your self image, self worth is in the gutter, you will not find a good enough partner. Well, sometimes, not that you will, uh, but prioritize yourself first. Mm-hmm. Love yourself first. Yeah. Find the friends that will help you find your worth. Yeah. And I, I personally have experienced when I was feeling the shittiest about myself, I attracted the shittiest people in my life. Um, I got out of really bad, really abusive relationships in college, and I would just go into another one because I needed that validation. (laughs) You don't need validation from nobody. You don't validation. You need to validate yourself. That's very true. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord of mercy! Because we become people pleasers, pleasers, pleasers. God help me. Yes. It's all good. All right. So we're going to go through um, suicidal thoughts. So if you need to take a break, let me know. I should be okay. Right now I'm okay. Okay. The NHS states, which the NHS is the national health care system in the UK. The NHS states that there is a clear link between suicide or suicidal thoughts and people who have previously self-harmed. However, not everyone who self-harms wants to end their life. Some people describe their self-harm as a way of staying alive by responding to or coping with severe emotional distress. It is important to find the right support or treatment to deal with the underlying causes in a less harmful way. This is something that's very hard for me to grasp because What's that? I have tried to commit die several times in my life and I've been hospitalized several times for weeks on end. And I'm very, very glad that I'm here. And sometimes my uh, self-harming tendencies are a way for me to, Feel. kind of punish myself yep because i feel like i need to be punished and if i yeah. can't especially if you were spanked as a kid yeah i was i was spanked by very um disciplinarian parents parents and uh my my grandparents would use the bible verse spare the rod and spoil the child i've heard that and I think there's a massive mistra- mistranslation with that one. Yeah. I and even if there's not that, I that's horrible. I that's think horrible. there's another one that they would say all the time. I think it's um. They're like, oh, we encourage spanking. And I was like, yeah. as a kid, I'm like, well, this is what the Bible says. So you know, I guess I deserve to be spanked. And now as an adult, I'm like, oh, that's abuse. Oopsie. I'm trying to look up the verse. It's Proverbs twenty two fifteen. Foolishness is bound in the heart of the child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. I don't think that means spanking, though. I think of, like, a teaching stick. I don't think that... Or, like, a staff. I don't think that meant spanking. Yeah. Like, that... And for those that translate it as that, I'm like, are you, you're you're basically teaching the kids whenever they do something bad to hit themselves. Yeah. And that's the King James version. Um, oh. King James, one... Something that uh, is actually proven, uh, he has changed the Bible so many times, and uh, he has mis- his version um, takes women out of the Bible so many times, and um, yeah. No, I don't like King James. Forgive me to the Christians that don't that do like it. I am not a fan of it. Yeah, it's not great. Um, he also took um, Jesus had three women disciples that saw him first. Mm -hmm. And um, King James took a lot of their um, words out and they were with Jesus all the time and they Mm -hmm. are hardly mentioned. And it makes me extremely upset 
And I think that was one of the reasons why Jesus was like, no, the women have to see me first because he knew that they would take the women out. He knew it. Yep. <sighs> it is frustrating. So I'd be more empathetic. I'm trying really hard not to have my heart hurt right now. <laughs> yeah. It's it's almost like degrading towards women. This might mm-hmm. might just go for all women, about trans women, cis women. I mean, for anyone women. Mm-hmm. It's uh, again belittling our worth, belittling our capability, uh, belittling our stands, where we belong. Mm-hmm. Like we're incapable, or what we say doesn't matter. That's why I don't like the King James version. But I will say with the self harm um, and suicide tendencies, when your brain is in that suicidal state, it is in fight or flight mode. Mm-hmm. And when you've had enough, your brain goes into fight mode and it will do anything and everything it can to protect itself, even if it means dying. Let me tell you, when you were, I had, to those, I, to those I do not know, um, by the time this podcast is posted, my video will already be out, but I had attempted suicide July 25th, something I've been planning for a while due to mental struggles and things I was suffering with that I thought I had to live with forever. Mm-hmm. I, I just needed medication, but <laughs> I didn't want to burden people because I was always this bubbly happy character and I didn't want to ruin that for anybody mm-hmm. and when people are suicidal the last thing they want to hear is oh what about your family what about your family what would they think what we need to hear is I see you I see you suffering I understand why you want to die mm-hmm. I am here what do you need from me Mm-hmm. we don't need to hear the reasons to stay alive we need to hear that you see our pain you understand why we want to die i feel like we are belittled for the suffering we're going through or like oh yes yeah. such a happy life it's such a happy trauma happens yeah and it affects it doesn't matter how many good things happen in our life when trauma hits it hits hard and that night um i am they were okay with me saying this they're okay with me sharing the story my partner struggled with alcohol mm-hmm. and had been battling um addiction with alcohol and that night I walked in on him being drunk mm-hmm. which triggered a severe PTSD again they never did nothing happened they didn't like abuse me or anything I just walked in saw that and walked out and because I have PTSD with alcoholics uh due to relatives mm-hmm. and I they are gotten better. They want to detox. They're going to see therapy. They have made a 180. I'm so proud of them. Mm-hmm. They have done massive change. And let me tell you guys, the comment's real. If they could, they would. If they love you, they will make the changes and respect your boundaries. Mm-hmm. If they if they got the help themselves, I didn't have to ask to do anything. This my partner mm-hmm. went out, got the help themselves. I didn't have to tell them to do a single thing. Mm-hmm. If they want to change, they will do the research and the appointments they need to change. Yes. But that night, my brain locked. My brain was stuck on, I don't want to feel anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't want to feel anymore. I don't, because during this time, I was experiencing severe heart pain where I had to lay down and my body, it felt like I was leaving my body. It was panic attacks. I didn't know that. Um, I had any fainting spells, not able to see. It felt like no doctor could figure out what type was wrong with me. And I was scared to see a psychologist because I was taught in the Christian church that psychologists were of the devil. And, oh, they they, they see from a, a uh, secular view and stuff yeah. like that. So I denied myself. I guessed at myself into believing I didn't need that. Mm-hmm. I was seeing a holistic doctor and they only could do so much. Yeah. I didn't want to admit that things were as bad as they were because I feel like I would let everybody down. 
and that my brain just did not want to suffer. I, I, my brain literally went, if I have to live with this heart pain, defending spells, this, this pain, this suffering, my, my, the, the, the anxiety brain spirals. Mm-hmm. That was just make your brain zone out and you shrink to the floor. You mm-hmm. can't snap out of it. You feel like you're going crazy. You feel like you're alone. You feel like you're insane and you don't want to tell anybody because you don't want them to view you like you're a monster, like you're crazy. Yeah. And during this time, I severely struggled with self-harm by cutting and I definitely did not want to tell anybody because you know there's a whole emo stereotype. Emo means oh emo people self harm, seeing people self harm. And I didn't want to see into the stereotype. <laughs> and uh, I do struggle with that. Mm-hmm. And as you were saying, some people self harm to feel because the body are so numb mm-hmm. and they want to be able to feel pain again. Mm-hmm. Some people self harm to punish themselves some people self-harm to die and some people self-harm and don't realize it and I just again was gaslighting myself to believe it was not as bad as I thought it was because mm-hmm. then I would not be that good dog I would be a good wife I didn't want to be seen as crazy I was scared that I would just be looked down on I was so scared of just being I thought you were this bubbly, happy personality. I thought you were this strong, independent person. I mean, everybody has a breaking point. And I was just really scared of revealing that I reached mine. And I went to a psych ward. I, I, I'm not gonna go into that how I attempted, but after I failed twice, I was like, well, I'm still alive. With a stick in my tailbone. <laughs> I got a stick, stick stuck in my tail, but I didn't know about it. I, I'm not going to say how that happened, but I, it happened. Uh, I called 911. I called the place and I said, I, I didn't know what to do. They put me in a psych. The, the ER was a horrible hell story. I'm not going to detail about that. So I went to the psych ward. Mm-hmm. That was the best thing that has ever happened to me. Oh that was one of the best experiences I've ever had. I know some psych wards are not good. Some of them are really bad and traumatic. And to those who have experienced it, I am so sorry. I, I'm so sorry. And I know me being able to experience a good one is privileged. I, I'm so sorry. Um, but there are some good ones out there. Mm-hmm. Reach out, call, do the research, mm-hmm. please. There are some good ones out there. But I found a good one. And I had fresh cuts on my legs. Shown. Nobody pointed them out. Nobody. The best thing that one of the patients said to me was, we're not monsters. We're just people who have been severely hurt for too long. Mm -hmm. And we don't know how to cope with it. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't treated like I was crazy. There were some restrictions. Like I couldn't leave the door closed. They had to to make sure like I didn't have a sharp. They had to. So they had like a thing to make sure I knew no new scars. Like, and that's just protocol to make sure I'm not doing anything. I understand that. Mm-hmm. But we were able to play games. We were able to like listen to music, share each other's music. We were able to just talk, write, draw. Yeah. It just, I realized when everybody that was there, they were there because they reached their breaking point. Yes. And did not know what else to do. Yes. And it's okay to feel like you don't know what to do. That it does not mean you're weak. It does not mean you're stupid. Sometimes we've been traumatized and we've been so much for so long. We're like, I don't know. And being medicated finally was one of the best things ever happened to me. So I was scared to get medicated because as the Christian church, like you have depression, anxiety, pray to wait. Your relationship's not strong with God or something's wrong between you and the Holy Spirit. You're not feeling the Holy Spirit. You just need to, that's not it. Mm-hmm. You see a doctor for physical health and well-being. We can see a doctor for mental well-being. And me being medicated, that stopped the fainting spells, the non epileptic seizures, most of the heart pain. <laughs> but it stopped. And I did not know my mind could feel so much peace. 
I did not know my mind could feel calm, quiet. Like we're a DID system. We have the voice, we have the alters talking, stuff going on. That happens. But like when you have the anxiety brain spirals, mm -hmm. oh, it's hard to snap out of it. It is hell to snap out of it. Mm -hmm. But finally being medicated, that has saved me. Going to the psych ward saved me. Mm -hmm. And also, I will say this, also going to the psych ward, having nobody who the heck I am, it was great. <laughs> like, people calling me, just like, seeing me as another person. Just so, that thought of me, I get scared as someone does, as a content creator with 4 million followers and more, I'm terrified of being vulnerable like yeah. don't get me wrong there's some things I know I don't have to explain there's some things I know I don't have to reveal that's fine mm -hmm. but I guess the biggest reason I'm sharing the story because I want to show that I don't want my platform to be a platform about like wow her life looks so perfect I wish my life no I don't want my platform to be one of those those tiktokers I don't want my life to be my my videos to display that mm -hmm. I want them to say wow she struggles too. So I'm not alone in this. Wow, she's been through that. So have I. Wow. And she's grown so much. Maybe I can grow too. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. That's all I want for my followers, for my little alt babies. That I get it. My life is not the paradise. Mm -hmm. But we can slowly make it to be together. That's what I want. So fi my spouse uh, finally going to detox and getting medicated. We're we're better. I'm better. And some again, like we all struggle with something. It's like you said, it's how we handle it that changes who we are. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> You're doing amazing. You are. You really are. And I, I can see it, that you have come such a long way, and it's evident. It really is. And I just want people to know that I struggle with suicide, too. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. You don't have to be in denial about it. You don't need to be. Mm -hmm. Don't hide that from yourself. Yeah. Be honest with yourself and let yourself get the help you need. Mm -hmm. If you go to a psych ward, you're not crazy. And if anyone makes you feel that way, dump them, throw them away. You're not crazy. You're not a monster. The right people will not treat you as such. Mm -hmm. We reach a point where we just have been through too much for too long. Mm -hmm. And we break down. And we just need to see the right doctors to be able to build right back up again yes and the right people yeah how are you feeling right now i'm a little lightheaded i, I am okay. do you have some water can you drink some water i have water i have bubbly i have a cat and my plushies i think i have not talked publicly about this mm -hmm. so it's a little scary yeah but i really want my little babies to not feel alone sure i'm gonna have a lot i know i'm gonna have a lot of comments being like oh so you're emo oh so i'm gonna i know i don't care about that i really just want them to see we are together in this mm -hmm. no it's not just them it's me and them i understand i get it Mm -hmm. but we make it through together again I don't want them to look at my life being like wow I wish I had what she had no I want them to look at my life being like if she can get through this I can get through this too okay I will say I think I might have to take a break and lay down yeah, yeah. let me pause it yeah okay the recording in progress okay so Speaking directly to our listeners, what would your message be about healing from religious trauma? That 
step away from religion entirely. For a time, if you want to go back, you can. But see it for yourself. Figure it out for yourself. Because I, I am a bisexual. My partner is non-binary. And for the longest time, I believe that being part of the LGBTQ was wrong and sinful and they were going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. And it was when one of my best friends came out to me as trans, they were this hardcore Bible thumper and they came out to me as trans. And I called them. I said, I, I'm not mad. I want to understand. Mm -hmm. I trust that I looked up to this person. I trusted everything they said. And for them to suddenly be trans, I was like, tell me, I, I want to, I won't give this person's name out, but like, I was like, I want to understand, can you please explain it to me? And they did. And I was like, wow, these things were taken out of context. And wow, like, I refuse to believe that God's going to throw people to just want to let them be themselves into hell. And you have pedophiles out there in the church who believe they're going to heaven or mm or like wife abusers and manipulators who, excuse mm. me, who believe they're going to heaven. I refuse that God would allow that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you've got to take a step entirely away from your religion. If you don't want to believe there's a God for your healing journey, that is completely fine. Don't let anyone manipulate you to believe you have to believe in something in order to heal. You don't. Mm. That is your own healing journey. Everybody's healing journey is different like do your research deconstruct look at the other religions look at other gods like do your research just don't be a zoophile or a pedophile don't do that D let's not do that let's not be racist or hell with other children. let's not do that mm -hmm. the, the good ones the good ones <laughs> take a step away from religion entirely deconstruct see what happened like don't be in denial accept what happened Seek the help you need mm -hmm. and find it for yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't like calling myself a Christian because I do not agree or believe everything in the Bible. I call myself a Christ follower because I believe in the actions of Christ, what mm -hmm. he did, how he displayed love. I agree with that entirely. I believe in that. So I call myself a Christ follower instead. And I... I don't want, don't let anyone guess let you to believe you have to seek God in order to heal. Sometimes you don't. I believe there's a God. I believe he exists. I don't think he's the God that other Catholic Christians say he is. Mm -hmm. I don't. I believe he's way more understanding than that. And again, if you don't believe in God, that is completely okay. That is fine. You don't need to believe in something, something in order to heal. But take your time. Mm -hmm. Take a step back. Seek professional help seek a psychologist talk to them about everything but accept what happened and don't be mad to yourself do not belittle what happened mm -hmm. I did that for a while I had been sexually abused three times in the church once when I was seven and then twice when I was so one when I was 16 and then it was like around October then I turned 17 in a February so it was pretty close together when it happened mm -hmm. um so when in the church you are taught to respect your elders to listen to your leaders mm -hmm. but respect does not equal letting them take advantage of you respect is not letting them cross your boundaries I believe for the longest, I started self-harming at 10 years old because of the different sexual abuses I endured by people I thought I could trust, like relatives or people in the church. And you think you're safe. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're going to have people saying, oh, my church isn't like that. My church isn't like that. Good for you. Not all churches are as good as yours. And unfortunately, sometimes you have those whitewashed tombs. 
don't let anyone belittle what happened. Don't let anyone gaslight you into believing you deserve that abuse. You did not. It, you did not. It was not consensual. You were manipulated. No, you did not deserve it. You were scared. You were terrified. I did not come out about what happened until I was 19 because I was scared. And honestly, with the different abuse I endured, I thought, oh, well, they're a church elder, whatever. Mm-hmm. There were, it wasn't an elder, sorry. It was an older leader, mm-hmm. one of the older male leaders. Um, so you were talking about it was a it wasn't a church elder it was a person an older who was older person than you. older church leader yeah I wanted to clarify that I wanted to clarify that they're they're elder they were elders because they're older than you so respect your elders that's what I connected it to um just when I told when I finally came out about it yeah and told this I'm not gonna say who it was I don't want to. I told them what would happen. They mm-hmm. said, are you sure that happened? Are you sure that's what happened? And I was like, this is why I didn't want to tell you. Yeah. Don't respond like that if someone comes out to you about some trauma. Yes. It is when something happens, you don't also don't gas out yourself and thinking, why didn't I tell anybody? Your brain is not fully developed. You cannot process or think you're not meant to as a child meant to process that trauma you were not meant to your brain is not developed enough to handle that Mm -hmm. you're scared you're confused it's someone you trusted Mm -hmm. and the last thing you ever want to see something bad happen to your family yeah don't gas out yourself into thinking why didn't i do anything your brain is not meant to know how to handle that Mm -hmm. sometimes you don't know what to do and that's not your fault that is not your fault. Yeah. It wasn't the, your fault, anything that you went through. No, and for people to be like, well, they were, well, they did this because of this reason. They did this, no excuses. Mm-hmm. There should never be excuses. They did that. That was wrong. That should not happen. I just want, I know you're asking me a question. My brain just went down the spiral of like, I, I know I gaslit myself a lot. Yeah. I don't want other people to do that to themselves. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how long you've known them, how long you trusted them. If they violate that, mm-hmm. they are not good. Tell someone, please tell someone. Please, please tell someone. You deserve to get help. Mm-hmm. And if the person that you tell is not receptive, tell someone else. Yeah, no, 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 no yeah. Like, I, don't stop at that one person. Find somebody else. That person, no. Mm-hmm. No. Exactly. I, I, If I could go back in time and see little Grace trying to tell the church leader that I was, you know, abused in the church, and I would, I would tell little me to be like, don't be dismayed about that one person. Go tell somebody else. Because when you tell that one person and then you respond that like that, that your brain goes, uh oh, someone else is gonna respond like that. Uh oh, maybe I'm just crazy. Oh, maybe I'm dismembering and you gaslight yourself and brains. It's it's hell. Mm-hmm. It is hell. Your brain becomes hell, and I, I hate people that belittle how that affects a kid. How it affects a child, how it affects a person. Yeah. Yeah. For those of us listening right now, I want to encourage you if you have faced any form of abuse in the church and you feel like it's your fault, it's not. And all the police. Please tell the police. Yes. I want to encourage you to. Um, seek out um, legal action against that person who has harmed you and I know how scary that can be and I know they'll be like oh there's not much I can do but in actuality your story could be so helpful to stop that person from abusing someone else I will say this 
about there was a guy that had I would tell the story actually this one I'm comfortable with the first incident I'm not as comfortable because that's Mm -hmm. a little more severe um the 16 to 17 episode was the same guy Mm -hmm. um the first incident was we were standing he, um, he was in a wheelchair and I did not know I was in his way I did not know I was in front of him talking everybody exactly what I wore I wore my magenta skinny jeans I had an I love Paris shirt with a fedora my little black boots with gems on the like rim top it was one of my favorite outfits and I got rid of it for this reason um because this incident uh scared me so bad I don't have the items anymore I got rid of them mm-hmm. um he I was talking and I didn't know he was behind me and also he smacked my butt and I turned around, I stomped, and I screamed, don't touch my butt. And we had all the witnesses there. They all saw what happened. They talked this, and you don't do that. It was just like a tap. It was a bam. And I was like, and I, my father talked to him, and he was like, oh, I'm sorry. And I thought, okay, this won't happen again. I belittled how severe it was. Mm-hmm. Second time it happened. Um our church had a basement and they had rows of seats okay mm-hmm. the, the table was for service that white tables chairs white table chairs not, not like pews or anything mm-hmm. and i was sitting in the very back um mind you it was a bit cold i was it was a bit it was i was at march around st patrick's day i had a black dress on and i got again i got rid of it it was so pretty it was a velvet hot topic dress and i got rid of it again for this reason I had a mm-hmm. green crystal on. It was, I looked really, really pretty. Uh, my little sister actually got up. And she felt so bad she got up. She felt so bad she left. She went to get this lady coffee. She, I don't know the lady's name, but Ian would always get her coffee every time she gained out. It was so sweet of her. And then, Anyway, so he was trying to learn to walk out of his wheelchair. And the deacon helped him in. And he's grabbing the back of the chairs. And I'm like, okay, he's going to grab the back of my chair. That's fine okay this uh he put so he's walking like this way okay i'm like right mm-hmm. here he put his hand right i had a low cut no i'm sorry i had my crop top shirt on it was a mm-hmm. cross crop top i'm thinking about uh, what i wore for st patrick's day i'm sorry it's okay. it was a black crop top shirt with crosses on it and it had a low cut back that's what it was um anyway so, so he grabbed he put it so a low cut back shirt Okay. He put his hand right on my back, just flat. And he goes, you're so warm. And I'm like, oh yeah, thank you. And then takes his hand, turns it and slides it right behind my shirt. And he goes, I hope you're having a nice day. And the deacon was right there watching him do it and said and did nothing. And then he gets me grabbing the back of the chairs. And I froze and I texted my best friend Elizabeth and I was like, this just happened. And the pastor did not kick him out. He just said, you can't do this. And if you do it again, you know, we'll have to get legal stuff involved. This is sexual assault and harassment, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But like, they didn't do anything. They didn't call the police because now this man could be roaming. Again, here's the thing, guys. If you do not, call, my, the, the moral of the story, if you do not call the police, that person will continue roaming around doing that stuff to other people. If you are a church member, if you are a pastor, call the police. Get yeah. cameras around your church. Your, okay. this is what I hate about churches. Your reputation out the window. If you're not prioritizing, prioritizing the safety of the people, the safety mm-hmm. of the kids. If mm-hmm. you do not do that, your reputation out the window. Don't think your reputation is doing great just because you put the pedophile and goes, oh, he's a good Christian man. No. Mm-hmm. No. Good people can do crappy things. That yes. happens. If this happens to a child, call the police. Mm-hmm. Get the police involved. Because if you do not, he will, they will, I don't know what gender they are, but they will go and do it to another church somewhere else. Yeah. Please get the police. I do not know what this man is to this day. I don't know where he is, what he's doing. I pray to God nothing's happened to anybody else, but I wished they did that. And I actually did have a conversation with this pastor 
uh, this past year. And I said, why didn't you do this? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, your dad said there was no need for it. And I said, just as someone who's experienced sexual assault and abuse, please do better next time. Mm -hmm. He was good. He understood. And I educated him, which was great. But some pastors, and I understand pastors or their wives or church members, they've probably maybe never gone through sexual abuse. They don't know how to handle it. Do research, please. Look into it, please. Please, please, please. You'd be doing the children a favor. Mm -hmm. Get cameras, do something, please. Because as a kid, they don't know. Sometimes they've been so abused at their home, they don't know how to cry for help. They don't know how to ask for help. They don't know how to handle it. So please be the hero they need. Please be the protector they need in their lives. Especially like sometimes they don't have a good role model. Be that role model. That's what we need. That's what kids need. They need to know they're safe. They're heard. They're understood. They don't know. They they don't know. Unless they're taught about sexual abuse or like this is a no-no spot. I wasn't taught that. Mm-hmm. Some other are not taught about physical, personal boundaries. Please prioritize that. Please. I don't, I just don't want. I just, if someone's experienced this three times, I, I don't, I'm irritated. I'm severely irritated. Yeah. That you have every right they, to be. They don't, they don't grasp the importance of child safety anyone mm-hmm. can mask as a good person and apple can look perfectly fine the so i take one bite and it's molded just i be the hero they need please mm-hmm. stand up for them please because again children are scared they don't know how to like some of them don't know how yeah they, are they afraid to get the police involved? Because police can be scary sometimes. Mm-hmm. Be the person to stand up. Be the person that takes action. Please don't let this just go slip under the carpet. Don't, don't do that. Please don't do that. Because yeah. imagine if that was your kid. Wouldn't you want your pastor to stand up for you? Wouldn't you want the teachers to tell you and get the police involved, let you know? Wouldn't you want that? Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go on a rant. I, it's okay. I am just so tired and disgusted from hearing so many of my alt babies telling me about the hell they go through at churches. And I want to know they deserve better than that. Yeah. But that is not normal in the church. That is, that's why I talk about it. That's not normal in the church. Mm-hmm. I know it's not all churches, but God damn it, it is a lot. Mm-hmm. One is too many. Mm-hmm. I just want them to know. I want them to watch and look out so they know. Because again, some of them are not taught. I, I, I want to be that person that they say, oh, this is bad. I, I didn't know that. I, I want to do that for them. Because I, I, again, I give what I wish I had. I needed someone and I, I didn't have that. So if I could be that for somebody else, damn, I want to be that for them. Yeah. I want to be that for other kids and other people and adults. I, I know what it's like to feel like no one's listening and no one's standing up for you. And I'm sure you know exactly how that feels too. Yeah. I hope my videos have been doing that. I don't know. I just, I give Every video I make, I do research. I put my, I don't do a video unless I have my soul into it. I, I, I look at people in the eye. I don't look at my camera. I look right at my face because I want to envision I am talking to them so they know I see you. Mm-hmm. That's why I kneel down. I offer, I look at them. I love to know I see you. Because I know what it's like to be alone. Yeah. Sorry, I went on a rant. <laughs> it's okay. Take a take a moment. Take a moment. So frustrating. It's okay. I think 
you are doing everything you possibly can and everything that you're doing is awesome. It really is. You know, I found your content and I was like, this is a person I need to have on the podcast. Yeah, how did, right a question. How the heck did you find my account? YouTube. I was scrolling oh, really? through YouTube shorts and I'll pull up the video. Hold up. Because I saved it. Hold up. Wait a minute. Ron's name was just putting in a heating pad up my shirt because my heart hurts. It's okay. So I'm just I- letting them know. So they're like, what's actually doing? I'm putting a heat pad because pain. I fell down a bunch of stairs and I had a concussion. So I'm still recovering from that. I'm okay though. Glad that you're doing better. Because you need to be doing awesome. Because you yeah. you deserve to do. I'm resting and being supervised. Yeah. I have but food. I have kitties. This oh, one. It was the that you're stressed out. It's with Skrillia. She. Let me tell you. She was a freaking gem. Oh my gosh. What a gem. Also Gothic Kayla. Everyone shout out to Skrillia and Gothic Kayla. If you want more comforting, awesome scene people, they too, angels. Mm-hmm. Just and I also found this one, life. the Toxic Church Handles essay. Ah, uh, yes! One of my favorites! I love that one. I will put the links to these videos in the description of... I love that one. That wasn't... No, the, that was a skit, but I'm showing how things are handled or have been mm-hmm. handled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, they're great videos. That's what I found. And I was, because I, for this podcast, I want to interview both creators and people anonymously because I think everyone should have a voice and anybody that right. wants to be on the podcast, I want them to be on the podcast. Something I recognized was like, you weren't looking for a certain set of followers when it came to who you're interviewing. And I love that. I don't like people who are like, well, sorry, you need a certain amount of people. And I'm like, you would be surprised what one story can influence. And I like that about you. Okay. And I don't know, you guys didn't see this, but like she sent me the outline to the podcast and holy shoot, this wonderful person did a lot of research about everything I told her, them, her, whatever. Whichever, they, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Again, all the viewers out there, I have never been on a more comfortable podcast <laughs> where they're asking me, hey, take a break, or hey, do you need a minute? Like, maybe we took a couple of breaks where I, my anxiety, pan- my um, panic, my anxiety attack were kicking in. I just laid on the ground. They, they waited on me. They let me read out the outline. Their outline was, again, they did a lot of research about all of this. I have not seen that, like, anywhere else. So this person's an absolute gem. Again, you've made me feel like, and I, I was telling you this in private, I'll say it in public. You do not make me feel like you're interviewing an idol. You're making me feel like you're interviewing me. Like the vulnerable, like torn parts of me that I'm still trying to pick up. And that is one of the best feelings I I, I need. Just sometimes people need that. So again, you've been amazing. So again, thank you. Thank you for sensitivity and everything again the pod i haven't been on a bad podcast i've been great but like your mental health sensitive and that again you, you're treating me like i'm, I'm like I'm like we've been besties for a while <laughs> and that oh my goodness it's it's relieving so yeah. thank you for that well thank you so much for being on and thank you for taking those breaks and putting yourself first because that's I mean, extremely i don't want to be in pain while i'm yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No one wants that. But I'm sorry. Thank I know you have a couple other questions, but I wanted to. I wanted to say that. Yes. Thank you so much. I mean, I, I, what you said about like uh, how you saw that I was just interviewing whomever, and I wasn't looking for a niche. No, because mental health affects everyone. Mm-hmm. Trauma is not exclusive to one demographic anyone can go through trauma it is very universal and literally anyone 
can have suicidal ideations, it's a very human experience. The thoughts of death, dying, those are very universal experiences. I'm not saying that they're good or positive experiences, Mm -hmm. but it's normal. Yep. It shouldn't be normal, but in this society, it's unfortunately normal. Yes. No one should ever feel like they should die. That's not what I'm trying to say. No, right. But when you've gone through a lot of trauma, there is a possibility of that happening. Mm hmm. After you've gone through a lot of crap, we yes. get it. Yes. And especially it's w- not selfish. Mm hmm. It's your brain literally trying to protect itself from all the crap happening. Exactly. And like, stay alive, please. But yes. Yes. we get it. Yes, and it's not just a human experience, it's animals too. I was shocked by that. I was like, hello? Mm -hmm. But it's... Yeah, animals experience... Yeah, animals experience mental health too. Animals experience uh, suicidal tendencies. My, My cat Storm Angel has severe anxiety and stuff mm-hmm. so we got her a friend she's doing better i'm glad she's doing better i mean you know Gigi is my service dog and she's been my service dog since 2020 she was certified in 2021 but she has always been there for me and um before she became a service dog my vet said oh your dog has severe anxiety because she needs to be with you all the time and she's really really stressed out every time you leave because she was um, ripping up the carpet around my door whenever I'd leave her in my room just to do anything and once she got trained as my service dog she does not have any anxiety at all and I think her anxiety was because she knew that there was something wrong with me and she yep. wanted to protect me and take care of me. Yeah, when and- like so I will tell the story when my spouse wasn't sober, uh my cat would pee on his stuff <laughs> and pee on his corner. And every time I leave, she went out, oh, she was telling me something. She was letting me know, hey, something's wrong because we had we had two litter boxes, one very big open air litter box. We had um pheromone plugins. And stuff like that and I got better but every time I left like to leave for a while she would pee on his stuff being like it's your fault it's mm-hmm. your fault but ever since he's been sober she's been out hanging around she's been in the kitchen she's been playing more we got she's been playing on the uh, new cat tree she's been going outside trying out. she has been she was telling me something Mm -hmm. my storm angel has been with me through a lot and because i felt severe anxiety on safety that unfortunately transferred to her as the vet said Mm -hmm. and she she moved with me she's experienced yelling she's experienced screaming not like just everything and i feel so bad because i was so mentally ill and i went on her and i i feel bad now i i've gotten better and I'm, i'm like not like I'm doing better with like not being yelling or screaming or being upset, mm-hmm. and I'm paying more attention to like how can I be a better cat owner for her? How can I help her now? Because mm-hmm. I need a lot of help, but I was denying it for myself. Mm-hmm. Now I'm, it, it's a, it's important to focus on your animal's mental health too, guys. It is important your mental health affects them too. It really does, especially my axolotl. He gets mad at me. <laughs> He, if I'm upset, he literally like, gives me this grumpy face, like, like, like they don't are able to show much expression, but like you could just tell mm-hmm. when they're upset. And I'm like, no. And sometimes I, if I don't eat, he won't eat because he sits in our living room. He watches us. Mm-hmm. And he likes watching the TV and stuff. He is such a goofball. But animals, fish, frogs, does not matter. They know they sense things my other cat dusk if i have anxiety she will paw meow, meow, meow. hold on let me show pictures of them 
that's dusk. Oh. And if I don't lay down, she will literally like paw at my leg, rotate around me, rub against me, meow, meow, meow. But I lay down or sit down, she will lay light right on my chest being like, nope, you stay right there. And then that's my cat Storm Angel on the coffin tree. I'll send these pictures to you later. Oh, but so cute. Animals know and they sense things. Mm -hmm. They really do. And they can provide a lot of emotional support having an or ESA. Should, if you have mental illness, get an animal. Mm -hmm. I am not kidding. Those things, holy shoot. They will help you. Yes. Get Please, I, 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 I'm being serious. Please get an animal, even if it's a fish. Make sure you get a decent sized tank, please. Um, you would be surprised how much they help you with your mental well being. Mm -hmm. It's the transference of you have to take care of this being. This being needs you to survive. So why not take care of yourself as well? It mm -hmm. kind of reminds you, at least for me, because. When I went to college, I took my cat Clark Kent with me and he's passed away since then, but um, he was my ESA and I had a doctor's note and this was before Gigi was certified. So I could not bring her with me. And that's when she started getting the severe anxiety. But um, I brought Clark with me and he lived in my dorms with me and he took such good care of me. And it would remind me to feed myself because I had to feed him twice a day, every day, or yeah. he would like lose his little ever loving mind. And My I was God. like, and they added their starving. Yes. And I was like, wait, I have not eaten it since I last fed him. I need to eat too. And it was really funny because he would not eat until he saw that I was eating. And once I started eating, he would start eating his food. And it made me really frustrated at first. I was like, how are you not hungry? You're just, you're meowing at me. And then I was like, the, oh, the correlation. The storm angel, like she requires someone to sit with her when she eats. She will not eat her food unless someone sits with her, pets her and says, you're doing such a good job. Good, good girl. You're doing such a good, she needs like that reassurance that she's doing a good job. And every time she's downstairs, try to give her a treat and be like, good, good girl. Like they know. Mm -hmm. they need reassurance just like we do mm -hmm. yes they do I think one of the best ways from healing from any sort of trauma especially self-harm and suicidal ideation is seeking a mental health professional mental yes. health professionals include social workers occupational therapists a counselor mm -hmm. A community mental health nurse. So a nurse with specialized training and mental yes. health conditions, a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. a psychologist, or a psychological therapist. You need a health professional who- You need a health group. You need someone who specializes in mental health to- a, diagnose you so that you can get medication because medication mm -hmm. is super imperative. It has saved me. Please get medicated. Please. Yes. They can get you medication and then they can start you on like assessments and worksheets and practices and help you cope with your mental health problems and give you so much insight to move forward in the next step of your life. I mean, my therapists in college, I had so many, but they, they saved my life so many times because my therapist, I don't know if this is common practice, but my therapist gave me her actual phone number to text her whenever yeah, I needed. That's, yeah. That, that's, com yeah. That's what my, my psychologist does. And I would call and text her and she made up this plan of if I could never reach her, if I couldn't reach her, if she turned off her phone, she was in a movie or something. If I couldn't reach her, these were the numbers that I needed to call. This is what I needed to do in case of whatever emergency. And it saved my life several times. And when it comes to helping a loved one with self-harm, it's really also, important to be it's mindful. It's important to talk. Mm -hmm. Even if the thoughts in your brain are crazy and gruesome and manic, they're there 
to help. Mm-hmm. I, unfortunately, there are some, forgive me, bitch of psychologists and therapists that are complete a-holes. But there are some that just want to help. Mm-hmm. Communicate all your dark thoughts. They will not see you as great. I am not going to talk about the thing that does go with my therapist. I, I'm not comfortable with it because I've had some very, especially with the people that did me wrong, my brain just goes toxic and just scared. And then just, especially people that don't want to my spouse or like if they've abused him, my brain goes, oh, mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> we're having Monster Energy Baseball bat. Uh, but I'm trying to learn that communicate out to your psychologist they're there to help you they're not going to see you as crazy they will not they'll say it's okay you've been hurt it's normal to have those thoughts let's figure out how to remove those thoughts let's figure out they're because they're not worth the energy mm-hmm. they're not worth they're not worth the energy you can hope the, here's the thing with the people you kick out of your lives okay they did you wrong okay you can live through your life you can hope for them to change and wish them the best if they do change, you get better. That does not mean you are obligated to let them back in. Mm-hmm. You are not. But sorry, continue. Communicate to psychologists, guys. To communicate, communicate to them. Yes, yes, you should. And when it comes to helping a loved one with self-harm, it's really important to be gentle and mindful of their triggers. That's why me and Scrub, we did a video about that. TikTok on that, let me post it. Uh whew. It was a video that showed just, I struggle with, and it's okay to admit this, okay? I struggle with cutting for 10 years and I do cut. And that is something that I've used to cope, to feel pain, to punish myself. And The last thing I know as a cutter, the last thing that, and I'm seeking help for it, by the way, I have people who are helping me get out of it, Um, but it's okay. It's okay to admit that you you struggle with cutting. It's okay. Like I, real quick, if you struggle with cutting and you try not to be tempted, your friends will do move mountains to make sure they help you. So my friends have certain doors locked. They have padlocks on certain doors where all the sharp items are to help me. It's not that they don't trust me or anything. I th- they they're asking me, hey, what can we do to help? Mm-hmm. How can we help you? They're not making me feel guilty. They say, you know what? I see your pain. I understand why you did it. How can we help? How can we help you? Mm-hmm. Do you want me to just sit here with you? Do you want to clean them? Do you want to just see the blood first just a little bit run a little bit? But do you, what do you need? You please, guys. Don't ever snap it. Don't say, why'd you do this? Don't, don't snap at them. Don't say, why'd you do this? You're crazy. Why would you ever? Don't. Also, don't use cutting as a manipulation tactic. Don't do that. I'm not talking about that. Don't you dare use cutting as a manipulation tactic. But to those that do it in a way to feel pain, to, to die, to... We don't need people screaming at us. We are already suffering. Yeah. We just need somebody to look at us saying... What do you need? What do you need? I love you. I, I, hey, you're so loved. You are so loved. They just need to know that they're still loved despite what happened. Mm-hmm. It's just, I'm sorry, when I first cut, um, I'm not going to describe how, with what, um, I'm not going to say who found out because they've changed and gotten better and they're the complete most beautiful person in the world and they've apologized for how they reacted. So I don't want to say their name, but, uh, it still was traumatizing for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I cut and they saw it and they thought that I was demon possessed. They thought I was crazy. They said, well, how would Jesus feel? How do you think, what do you think Jesus thinks about this? And what they need to hear is, I love you still. Those cuts don't scare me. I love you still. That's what they need to hear. Sorry. I didn't mean to. Okay. Don't, don't you know. feel sorry. Like you're, you're <laughs> showing true emotion because this moves you. 
Well, again, I it's I give to my followers what I wish I received, mm-hmm. and it hurts. I didn't receive that, and I'm still recovering from it. It mm-hmm. still hurts, mm-hmm. but it makes me feel better knowing I can give it to other people who have not received it. Yeah. It can be very difficult to find out that your loved one is hurting themselves. But my advice yeah. is to always ask first but tr- before trying to help yeah, and ask how ask. you can support them. Because it's a lot. It's a lot of thoughts and emotions. You're really scattering. Don't panic. Don't scream. Just do one thing at a time. Now, if they're dying on the floor, then call 911. But talk. Mm-hmm. Talk to, and unfortunately, it might happen a couple more times, but let them feel comfortable enough to approach you, to communicate mm-hmm. with you. Say, hey, if you struggle with cutting, let me know. Hey, if you cut again, let me know. We'll take care of it. Let them know. That's what my best friends do. Like, there was a time where something happened around my wedding, and I cut it. And I went up to my spouse and my best friend, Ellen, and I'm like, I did it again. I'm sorry. And they were like, okay, what can we do to help? Let's clean it up. And just did not yell at me. They didn't react horribly. They just were like, it's okay. Uh, they hugged me. They're like, I still love you. What do you need? Let's put this go put babies on it, okay? Well, I'll clean it up for you. Don't worry. Let's put some lotion on it. All right. Let's like after the band-aids are on. Let's mm-hmm. massage your leg. It's okay. Like sweetest yes. kindness. That's all they need, man. They're already mm-hmm. suffering. Why the heck add to it? Mm-hmm. Sorry, I I love you, Ellie. <laughs> I'm sure Ellie loves you so very much. She's my best friend. She was one of my bridesmaids. She's been with me through a lot. We've been what I've known you for ten years, about. Oh, Almost ten years. Yeah, That's no, about ten years. 2023. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've known each other. We've known each other for ten years. That's such a blessing. I'm so happy that you have each other that's such a blessing she was in my transformed episode we did it at her house awesome so they're they're one of my biggest supporters that's that's they they don't ask anything of me Mm -hmm. you know they don't ask me to post them they don't ask me to like uh like show them on their story to game they don't Mm -hmm. do that Mm -hmm. they see success like oh good job let's let's go celebrate let's go celebrate <laughs> like yeah. they reach for a million they're like let's go let's go to the zoo let's go to the zoo let's go to a rage room let's go to the i want to like, go to the zoo i miss i don't know bro. let's go to the zoo but like they celebrate they don't take mm-hmm. they don't demand mm-hmm. and they're there every step of the way and, and if i ever screw up they're like hey you should not have done this let's take accountability and fix this mm-hmm. and if I if I do something wrong or if I don't understand something and I completely misinterpret something, they're like, hey, you should probably make a video apologizing for this and take accountability. I'm like, oh, okay, I did not know this. Thank you for letting me know. And they let me know. And that's what I love about them. They don't sweet talk me. They let me know if I ever screw up or saying, hey, like, you should definitely do this. And they've been, they helped me grow. And that's what they should do. Yes. I think it's also really important to know that if your friend self-harms, you are not responsible to get that person to stop self-harming. Yes. So it's really, it's not in your power. You, it's them. Mm-hmm. It's their, as, as someone who does struggle with self-harm, who is a cutter, who's, I can say this personally, maybe it's not for everybody. No one can stop us. You can't force us. It is because we feel worthless. We feel as if we deserve it. Mm-hmm. The best thing you can do is treat us what, how we deserve to be treated. Give us the things that we missed out. Mm-hmm. Help us see that we are worth more than the scars on our body. Don't point out the scars either. Don't do that. Don't don't point out the scars, please. Don't point out. I hate that. When people ever point out my scars, I'm like, I don't like that. Like, I'm okay with my best friend. We make jokes all the time. Like, look, a barcode or, or look, it's like cutting board. We, I'm okay making those jokes that helps me cope. It's not for everybody, but only my best friend and I do that. But it helps me, like, see in a positive way, like, 
it's your retired cutting board. I put it away. As soon as it's it's that's how I cope. Mm-hmm. Is joking is how I move past things. And but no, you can't force anyone to stop cutting or stop. You can't. That is you get the best thing you can do is be there and give them the treatment they deserve. Yes. The best and thing it's you gonna, can do is be there to listen yeah, and show you some, care. Yep. Yeah, sometimes we'll slip up. Sometimes we will, and that happens. But just be that person to be like that we can come to. Mm-hmm that we can go to and just communicate. You're not responsible for making a stop. Mm-hmm. We are. Mm-hmm. But we need our time. Yeah. And unfortunately, again, you can't, sometimes people, they don't, some of them don't want help. As unfortunate as that is. And it, I, I, if you are the, the person, I am so sorry. I, I am. But some of us just want help. We just don't know how to get it. Mm-hmm. And just show us, you know. Don't be rough. Just show us. Just show us that you care. Just that's all we need. Yes. And if you find out that your friend is self harming, I want you to know it's not your fault. And if they come to you, it's so important to stay calm and be patient with their process through recovery. If they relapse into self injury, do not give up on them, please. And do not take it personally continue to encourage them to get professional yeah, right. help mm-hmm. and let them be in control of their own recovery okay do not try to control them if you need support because your friend is hurting themselves if you individually need support because this is get hard it. for it's you okay yeah get support it's okay like i know like, my struggle is not meant for everybody. Some people can't handle it, and that's okay. That, that's, 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 not, that's not their fault. But there are people that can't handle it. But even they, and if you're the cutter, you see your friend getting hot because of what's happening, you're not a burden. Mm-hmm. They're trying to figure out better ways to help you. But I, I actually, everything you said, I have not heard or thought for myself, and it makes sense. And I appreciate you saying that. And I'm sorry if I keep interrupting and stuff. My brain goes, okay. ooh, thought. Yeah, but it's okay. Everything you said is beautiful. Beautifully said. Beautifully done. Thank As you. someone who struggles with cutting, I, I support everything you're saying 100%. What would you want to tell your inner child or past you about present you? We made it. We're not dead. <laughs> um, and that we're going to be okay. So no younger me was, God, again, I, as a kid, I, told this, I talked about this in my video that will be posted before this. Um, because of sexual abuse and different other abuses as a, as a young child. I always, every single day, would think about different ways. Trigger warning, by the way, of death. How I'd kill myself. And I thought that was normal. So, you know, reading the Bible and stuff, I, you know, I always ask a lot of questions. And I I really confused a lot of kids, which made sense. Like, I didn't have many friends. I was the loner kid standing on the side. Uh I know I didn't think I'd make it. I didn't think that I was going to be okay. I thought I was too much. And again, I, my trauma is not meant for everybody to handle. I, I understand that and that's okay. I didn't understand that as a kid though. I didn't know that wasn't normal to talk about. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. And I would tell my younger self that you're going to be okay. You made it. There are people who will understand. Just just wait a little longer. Mm-hmm. I know younger me did not expect to be here. I'm glad you're here. Younger mm-hmm. me would have been like, what the frick are you? You're going to go to hell looking like that. I know that. Younger me would have been like, 
you 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 gay <laughs> what mm, like your girlfriend would have been so confused and been like uh, you're gonna go to hell yeah sometimes a good thing for me to do when I think of younger me or reparenting myself is I pull up a picture of little me like this one and I just look at little me and I go everything's gonna be okay even though you don't have your dad who is your biggest supporter even though you don't have either of your grandfathers anymore who are also your big supporters does not mean that you will not still get support because growing up the three most consistent support systems that I had were my dad my grandpa and my papa and yes they were valuable men that had their own issues but I know that I never once ever doubted that they loved me and one of the hardest things that I've had to That's deal with mom. yeah one of the hardest things that I've had to deal with um being an adult is that I whenever I'm under so much duress I want to see my dad I want to talk to my grandpa's and I don't have them anymore. And I know that would freak the fuck out of little Grace. <laughs> and I would tell myself that I do get to build a new support system. And my best days are not over yet. That my future is still very bright. That I'm I'm going to be okay. And that I have a man that loves me so very much and I have my animals that love me so very much and just because change happens does not mean that I can't change too because I was so resistant towards change as a child and it was always happening I went to 14 different schools growing up it was always happening and I hated it so very much almost every semester was a new school and I it was like new new environment new friends and I constantly had to adapt and I would tell younger me you don't have to do that anymore you have consistency now you have stability now and even when you feel you're most unstable you have people around you who are there to hold on to you and make sure that you stay here there is a song made me think of. That's why I was on my phone. By Nifrex, things are going to get better. And it's talking about, I just do me, you just do you. I got a clear view. We're going to make it soon. Um, hold on again. Let me get through this ad real quick. I want to read some of the lyrics to you. But I recommend listening to all my followers or everyone listening to the podcast. Listen to this song. It's by again, Nifrex. It says, growing up, parents got me a guitar. Said, you can do anything, kid. You can go far. You could be a president, fireman, race cars. The sky is the limit, kids. I shoot for the stars. So I strummed the guitar every day. Found a passion for music that never went away. Joined a couple of bands and played a few shows. Tried to impress the girl in, front low, in the front row. But soon enough, everything starts to change. As you grow up, nobody treats you the same. They try to take your future and make it real safe. You could be a doctor, accountant, or something sane. But yo, whatever happened to the sky was the limit. I fell in love with music, never thought it was a gimmick. I worked so hard on every tune and every lyric. My whole identity depended on being artistic. So now you want to strip away. So you, so you want to, now you want to strip that away. So you feel okay. Cause if I make it to the top, what does that really say that you shouldn't have given up that you made the mistake? But if I fail, you feel much better about picking your lane, right? Talking about people who don't see your value. They when I tell you're a kid, you that you could be anything as you grow adult, they're like, do something safe. Sometimes I, I haven't had a parent die. I had, I'm not going to talk about this one that much because it still hurts. My, one of my grandfathers had committed. Um, so I think I'm losing that, but I had a support system, but this old lady named Donna, Donna Schaefer. And she was an old lady that has took care of me since I was five years old. My little green outfit. I know I have a picture of her in me. I know I have that. But she, we, when my, I, 
something happened. I'm not going to detail. Um, that's I don't want to expose different things about my family. Um, but something happened, and we ended up living with her and her husband. And she was a six-year-old lady. She was a five-year-old in a 60-year-old lady's body. She loved Happy Meal. She loved SpongeBob. She loved My Little Pony. She always brought smiley faces, stickers, and gave them to children. She was disabled and stuff like that. Um, but she was my biggest support system. She had this like little shaky country voice like, hi, sweetie, how you doing? Can I help you with something? That sweet, you know, a sweet Southern voice and just was always the sweetest person. I got a picture. Hold on. I got to find it. Here she is. That was Donna and me. Hmm. But she was my biggest support. And then in 2019, in July, she had passed away. Hmm. And when I started going emo during this time, I felt like I lost my biggest support because she adored everything I did. She'll go, that's cute, sweetie. Or what's that, sweetie? Oh, you're so funny. Just like not degrading me or making fun of me or calling me like you look weird like some of my other family members did. She, she she believed in me mm -hmm. and so when she that she was my best friend actually my spouse proposed to me on her grave as we had a picnic because she was the one person I wanted him to meet and so it meant a lot that he, he decided to propose to me and it was the day of her funeral as, as, as for some people it might be creepy but I don't think you guys realize the closeness I had with this lady she knew me since I was five years old and we grew up together she was literally my best friend. We played Webkins together. Webkins! Yes, we played Webkins. We baked uh, cookies. We made chicken nuggets. We watched like different movies. My Little Pony Equestria Girls we watched that together. And so him proposing to me on her grave on the day of her funeral meant the world to me. I felt like he met her and proposed in front of her to me. So, yeah. That's so sweet. Sorry, I went on a rant. <laughs> it's okay. It's a tangent. A it's tangent. a lovely tangent. I'm I, my brain goes, you tell something. I'm like, oh, I relate to that. I want yeah. to understand. I get it too. I That's where my brain goes. And I'm sorry that bothers you. That's how I show sympathy. Because mm -hmm. I want them to know, I get it. I understand. It's okay. Mm. I mean, that's the whole purpose of this podcast. We're the Trauma Dump Podcast. You tell Yay! me everything and I relate to it and it doesn't bother me at all. It okay, actually cause... makes me feel so warm inside. I'm listening to it. I may not be looking because I always turn my ear. I don't no, know. It's a weird thing good. that I do also, that I'm like, like. If you have ADHD, I don't know if you have ADHD. You're not I do really have ADHD. Sometimes you got to look around. I don't have it, but like with my anxiety, I like looking at things. I like touching like a pancake squish my little. I have to, my, my hands have to be doing something. Mm -hmm. I need to do with something. So mm -hmm. you're completely fine. I'm not offended. As well as some people with autism can't look people in the eye. I, I'm not offended by that. Sometimes it just makes them more. You do whatever makes you comfortable. I'm not going to be offended. Yeah. So this is my last question. The oh, final question, right? Because I, I want to make sure that every podcast, yes, Gigi, you you tell us, but every single podcast, I want to, I want to have the interviewee talk about the things that they've gone through, the highs and lows of it, and then have a resolution of the things that they have done for their healing. And the healing process is forever. But if you have any recommendations for what has helped you heal, for our listeners to hear that maybe it could help them. When I first started TikTok, I was this Christian girl that thought I was stupid for having BID. I was, I thought that the LGBTQ was wrong. I was so mentally ill and manipulated and gaslit by religion. 
-hmm. and degraded my worth because I thought my worth was only found in the actions I did for God. If you're recovering from that, unfortunately, there will be people in your life. There's a dream. There is a goal in your mind. And sometimes there are people in your life you have to let go. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. You will lose people. You will have to cut people off. You, it does not matter how long you've known them. You can wish them well. And if you're one of those people in my life I cut off, I really, I really hope you're doing well. Like, it, just because it didn't work out for us doesn't mean it won't work out for you or somebody else. Sometimes, like, friendships just grow bad, and it's just not meant to be, and that's okay. And I really hope you guys are doing well. I, I really pray you do. Mm -hmm. And I hope you guys are getting the help you need. Um, But it's okay to let go of people for mm -hmm. your own mental health journey. You prioritize your own mental health journey. I did not. And that's what led me to want to kill myself mm. because I felt alone with my suffering. It does not matter if you're the bubbly, wonderful, don't mask your pain. That only makes it worse. Yeah. Please don't hide it. Don't neglect it. Don't neglect yourself. Give yourself the help you deserve. If you deserve help. Mm -hmm. the one thing that's gotten me through is finding the right people and that takes time it's finding the right doctors it's finding the right things that give you comfort find things that bring you comfort like for me right now I have my water bottle I have a squishmallow behind me right here I have my pancake squishmallow I have my best friend Ellie right here I have food I have another squishmallow right here find the things that bring you comfort it does not matter how childish it is but prioritize you mm -hmm. as if you look up to me as I don't know if you identify as an influencer or a content creator I had to get help it does not make me a monster it does not mean I'm stupid it doesn't mean I'm crazy it does not mean I'm a lost cause. Mm -hmm. It just means I have been suffering and neglecting myself for way too long. And it finally snapped. Mm -hmm. If you attempted, you're not a monster. You're not stupid. You're not selfish. You're just as equally worthy of love. But if you give you guys any advice, your mental health, your journey, prioritize. And the right people will understand you can help some of your friends, but if the doctor's sick, you can't help a sick patient. Like I have a rule with my friends. If they need help and I say, listen, I'm not having a good mental health day. Can we postpone to a different day? Do that. I do that with all my friends. And the right friends will be like, oh yeah, we can do that. Cause sometimes you're not in the right mood, but please find things that bring you comfort. Find the things, find the right, your right group. It will take time. And don't give your trust out willingly. Have them earn it, please. And if they really are your friend, they will take the time. They will show you you are worth taking the time for. Mm -hmm. And take everything that happens. Seek help. Talk to people. See it as an opportunity to possibly help someone who's gone through something else. That that helps me. I know it's not the same for everybody, and I, I apologize that offends anybody. I, I don't mean to. That helps me. I did not deserve what happened. I know I did not deserve to be treated that way. I, I know that. But now I learned and I can look forward to and I can look see other people and be like, hey, I had this happen to me. You definitely should just do this. So that's, I think that's the biggest thing for recommend. Just please, you are worthy to seek help. You are worthy to treat yourself, heal, and recover. You deserve to have your own healing journey. The right people will respect it and be there and cheer for you on the sidelines. I promise you there are people who are like that and capable of that.
you maybe you're in that circle you just haven't found them yet you will find them i promise you want to look alternative you want to dress alternative you want to look like this you want to do something you can mm-hmm. you can i just don't want them to doubt themselves i love my i love them I love my little, oh, I love them so much. They share their stories. They're so sweet and encouraging. I, they are one of the biggest blessings in my life. Like, I love scrolling through the comments being like, my babies, they ask me for recommendations. I hold, that holds my heart so close because I'm like, they're like, can you do this? Because that means they entrusted to me. Mm-hmm. And that, I, that might sound weird. But they are my little family. And just make you wishy washy. Yeah. So what a wishy washy. Yeah. I'm glad that you have such a kind, considerate, empathetic fan base. I mean, that is they really a, are. a privilege. It's a true privilege mm-hmm. to have. So no, not everybody has that. Mm-hmm. I, I wish they did. And I recognize that it's a privilege. I just I really wish that other people would be just as kind and maybe they'll reach out to other content creators maybe they'll take what i have and reach out you know it's not just for them it's for other content creators too mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. thank you seriously yes you we're such a blessing thank you thank you for being on the podcast All right that so was fun i loved it hell yeah so you can follow Kat Lynn on Instagram and on TikTok. Yeah. Claude underscore beauty 101. So please, if you don't already follow them, which I'm pretty sure if you are watching this episode, you already follow them. Duh. But if you don't, <laughs> go follow them. Give them a like. Get them, give them a heart because their content is so healing, so moving, so kind compassionate if you need a scene big sister to like reach out and just give you so much love go watch their content if you or someone that you know suffers from any form of suicidal ideation or self-harm or is struggling and in a crisis please call 911 or call or text 988. That is the crisis lifeline. You can call them anytime, day or night, 24 seven, and talk with a trained crisis counselor in your area. If you're watching over on YouTube, here are our memes of the week. every episode we spin our wheel of emotions to learn a new feeling and how it correlates to trauma so i'm gonna spin the wheel we're gonna zoom in Ooh, that was too far it says startled so startled Woo. whenever i feel startled i oftentimes am really unable to function. Whenever I get like a fear or panic response, it can trigger me into um, not being able to function like at all. Sometimes I will have a panic attack if I'm startled and that can result in me accidentally hurting myself. The shock startled response is your body's 
way of saying that there's something wrong or something that it didn't know that could happen. Whenever you're having any sort of emotional response, it's super, super imperative to take it in, assess it, and do the best with what you can with it. Special thanks goes out to all of our Discord users. Thank you so much for being on the Discord. Thank you for showing your support to other users. And thank you so much for showing your support to me and seeking support for yourself. I am truly honored to be a part of your healing journey. And thank you so much for being a part of mine. If you'd like to support our podcast, we have a Patreon and we also have a bonfire where you can get custom apparel designed by yours truly. Remember, you are capable of a fulfilling life in spite of your circumstances and your trauma. May you rise again from the ashes and be filled with peace, hope, love, joy, and understanding. I'll see you guys in the next episode on Sunday. Have a happy Halloween. Bye. Because it's spooky season doesn't mean that you cannot still stay safe please stay safe out there during spooky season okay i'm looking at you you better be safe all right bye <laughs>